That's what it's called. It's called the Green Flash Beer. Green Flash Brewing. Brewing, I yes. Believe. <laughs> it's their farewell swan song. Actually, they yep. just came out with this. Uh, Steve and I were at a release party. I took them. It was the very last release party I went to at OMSI. Oh, yeah. I took them, and then they released it there. So it was kind of funny. Nice. Hey, we're live. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Nice. I look, I look over there, but the camera's actually here. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're live. Hey, hey, hey oh, wait. Hey, ah. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 31. Hope you can hear me. I just realized I didn't check audio before we started. I'm assuming you can hear there us. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> uh, hello in chat. Chat is working. Love to see the chat working right off the bat. Seems to be working. <laughs> oh, in memoriam, we talked about this two weeks ago. Yep. Green Flash Brewing. <laughs> We have probably the uh, final batch of Green Flash Brewing that will ever be released to the public. Probably. Here, uh, yeah. because they don't exist anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they that, sold that's all... That's probably why I got it for so cheap. <laughs> yeah, they, they sold all of their assets uh, through a, uh, a, a debt collection company uh, on March 30th, I believe. And so basically anything you find on retail shelves for Green Flash is the last you'll ever see. Yep. So, uh, so you might want to buy it and yeah. say, hey, it's rare. This That's doesn't right. exist anymore. <laughs> so, Jeff, I brought some really rare stuff. That's right. That's you right. can't even find this that anywhere. You cannot find this in stores That's anymore. right. That's right. <laughs> Although we might open it up and be like, oh, now we know. Yeah. Now we know why they <laughs> shrunk from a 50-state distribution down to like 15 states <laughs> just to the East Coast. Now they're like gone. Now they're just gone. So. All right. Let's do it. All right. I got us each one. So it should be good to go. Beer from Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the uh, Green Flash Brewing Blonde Ale. Or as they like to call it, the GFB. GFB. And I'm sure... Oh, look at that. Oh. Yeah, it's a 1.3.2. Ooh. 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 Oh, bad. That's, it, mine <laughs> looks prettier, though. Yours is prettier. Yours it's is for cool. camera. Yeah. My, mine is so I can actually drink the damn thing. Ah, uh, shit. Mm. Eh. All I'm getting is, I'm not going to say yeah. it, but because <laughs> <laughs> I already know the joke you're going to make, Jeff. Ah, hello everyone. Good to see ya. How's everyone doing? What are you guys drinking this night? Assuming you're of age. If you're not of age, what are you drinking that's not alcoholic? It's like no flavor to this. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. It's a Blondale. At four. I'm, I'm getting more of a a real light malt taste than anything yeah. else. I mean, that's what it should Blondale should be. Mm -hmm. Four point eight. A little biscuity note at the end. Yeah. It's like they they tried making a blonde ale mm -hmm. and mix it with a lager or, or something like that. Yes. Um. Yeah, not, not, I mean, hot day, lawnmower beer. This is a lawnmower beer. It's definitely a lawnmower beer. Yeah. You know, 4.8, they give you this big can. They, here's the craft version of the <laughs> Coors Light can, essentially. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, not, not impressed, but it was only uh, 199 a can. Uh, that's not too bad. No. Uh, new here. Uh, welcome. I'm not new. Yeah. We're not new. No, We've been here for a while. Uh, oh. <laughs> extreme Tech. Uh, how do you say your first name? That's. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, Fernandez, I got, but yeah. Just like the founders. <laughs> <laughs> 199 a can. That's right. Mm. Jeff, you make my Wednesdays not boring anymore? Oh, thank you. What about me? Yeah. John's here too. <laughs> yeah, I'm here too. No one, no love for the co host. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Um, let's see. You want to do some news? Let's or? do some news. Do yeah. Some news. This, this week in, in beer news. Oh, let's see. Raspberry Lemonade Julius with Passion Fruit Rum. Ooh. That sounds good. Uh, thank you, sir. Let's see. I love I... my hops and brews, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This week in beer news, uh, Australian brewers are making beer from yeast found on a shipwreck. Not just making, they have made. They have made this, and it's yeast from, or a shipwreck from 220 years yeah. ago. Yeah, 1775. 
four, I believe, yeah. is the date on this. Um, this is a brewery, uh, James Squire Brewery, which was actually the first brewery in Australia. Um, uh, amateur divers in 1977 discovered a shipwreck off the coast of Australia um, uh, near Preservation Island. Uh, and uh, among the haul that they discovered in there was um, uh, some barrels, some literature, some tobacco, yeah. things like that. Uh, peppercorns, animal uh, remains, that kind of thing. Jugs and whatnot, yeah. But they found, what was it, 38 or something like Sound that? Like Th- that. 38 <laughs> bottles of beer and wine. Yeah. Um, and they were perfectly preserved. They were sealed, still sealed. But then, you know, they had the crust all over. But yeah. Right. Um, but 220-year-old bottles of beer and, and wine. Um, well, in Just 1990- imagine how long that fermented. <laughs> right. So in 1993, some experts from the Australian Wine Research Institute took samples from the sealed bottles and determined that they were beer and wine um, and decided that they wanted to uh, reculture the yeast that was inside of there. Um, and... Uh, in an attempt to bring that strain of yeast to the current day and maybe make some current day beer out yeah. of it. Um, uh, which has been done before, but uh, what they found was, uh, uh, they said, quote, this particular yeast was very temperamental and had a thirst for life. Uh, which means... <laughs> it was a hearty yeast. It was <laughs> a big yeast. Yeah. <laughs> um, thirst for life. Ate a lot of sugars, pooped out a lot of beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, the, I don't think this was more beer, more just malt liquor or, yeah. you know, mead. Yes. Probably, mm-hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> went straight for liquor. So so the first couple strains that they used of this, or the first couple brews that they made with this, uh, they said almost had like a cider taste to it. Um, which it, it was a very aggressive, which a, a lot of ciders and champagne yeast, you That's get it, yeah. very high ABV very quickly. Yeah. Um, and, and they, they found very similar things with this, but what they found was using the strain of yeast, um, it blended very well with making a porter. Ooh. Um, and so, uh, what was it? The James, James Squire Brewery has, yeah. uh, about a week or two ago released the Rec Preservation Ale, which is a dark, mighty, spicy and stormy porter. Um, it is only available on tap in the former penal colony yeah. known as Australia. <laughs> um, uh, you know, we have a friend down there right now. We do have a friend down there. Uh, I'd be like, please go there. It is of, only on tap. Uh, growlers. Maybe they have, right. maybe have crowlers or something. So I don't know how you would possibly ship a pressurized crowlet. <laughs> But but my wheels are already turning on uh, potentially seeing if we can get some That'd of be, this. That would be fantastic. I know. As soon as I read this, I thought of uh, this yeast. I was like, oh, you know who this would be perfect of? Would be Sandy Am's uh, Pirate Stout. Oh, the Pirate Stout. And then yeah. I was like, oh, it's a shipwreck. Oh, can it be called like Pirate <laughs> Booty or something That's like right. that? <laughs> or, you know, uh, Shipwreck Co. or Buried Treasure. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like, oh, there's this yeast needs to be at a pirate bar or something yeah. like that. This is just too too good. Uh, uh, they said, oh, John, you're only on two Wednesdays a month, so sorry. Oh, so sorry. So I, I only, I'm the one constant. I'm the only one that makes you happy half of the time. That's right. Uh, awesome. Sounds like the K3 Plus is working great. Yes, I am getting the K3 Plus dialed in. Uh, it's It's been a little bit of a... Um, the... There's no independent gain on this, so basically it's a it's a it's an out per channel, and so I have to level my entire sound coming into the computer based on a per channel basis, not on a on a like house sound basis. Mm-hmm. So getting it dialed in is a little bit more finicky. Um, that and I'm not running any post processing. So what you're hearing now is just live from the mics. Uh, there's no compressor, there's no limiter, there's no nothing that I would normally run in post. So, especially we, for the live show, it's a little... Yeah, little we always sound this sexy. That's right. <laughs> Just listen to the sultry sound of my voice. That's right. <laughs> Need some Barbados rums. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yes, unfortunately, only available in Australia. Well, I am well, so jealous. Well, I really wanted to try this. Yeah. I, I was reading the article and going, oh, this... Oh, that sounds me. Oh. They're gonna make large batches of it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. No, they probably made like one keg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's probably a five gallon sitting in one guy. Yeah, in the tap house. Mm. So, just curious, has anyone out there been just so thirsty for beer? Yes, I mean so, thir- so that thirsty. it's an emergency. <laughs> it is an emergency. 
I need beer. I need beer. I require beer. I, I am literally going to die without it. Without it. Have any of you been in that situation? I've come close. I've, I've been close. Close. I have been close to picking up my phone, which I just realized I didn't put on silent. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I have been this close to picking up my phone, dialing 911, and requesting that emergency personnel bring me a, an ice cold beer <laughs> um, as one woman in St. Pete did this week <laughs> twice, twice. <laughs> I, I saw this article and I was like I know it's not technically beer news but it has some beer and I, just, I couldn't stop <laughs> laughing I was like we can make a quick little stop here and of course it's in Florida. Yeah, it's in Saint, Florida. Saint, Saint Petersburg, Florida. A 58-year-old Saint Petersburg woman is accused of calling 911 to get beer. Um, <laughs> arrest affidavit for uh, Jennifer Roberts, uh, known as Jennifer Sunday, um, uh, called police on Sunday multiple on multiple occasions um, and told dispatchers that she had a medical emergency. When paramedics arrived, she told them that she needed beer. She called just after noon and again just before 4 p.m. So she was getting started early. Yeah. Um, this is not the first time Sunday has caused trouble. Officials say that she made 28 prior 911 false claims uh, since February of this year. She has been since charged with misusing the emergency <laughs> call system. <laughs> uh, there's a brewery in Georgia that makes emergency drinking beer. Ooh. Ooh. That's kind of cool. So it was yeah. like one of those zombie survival kits. Break glass to, to yeah. you know, survive. <laughs> Sometimes you need it. You know, that would be a really cool, um, like, 12-pack, is if you put, like, a clear plastic finish on them uh -huh. so you can see the beer and just, like, punched here to enjoy yeah. as an emergency or something like <laughs> Zombie apocalypse case. You know what's running through my head right now is the Hank Williams Jr. song, Fax Me a Beer. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Um, someone asked, why would I put a 1050 Ti with a Ryzen 5 2500G? Stay tuned to the end of the show. Uh, after the first hour, we usually get into some Q&A. Ask me that question again. I'll get into that. Yeah. Because that the common misconception about, oh, it's an APU. Why would you put a graphics card with it? Because there's really good reasons for it. So stay tuned. Ask it again, and I will answer that. So... Uh, what else do we got? Uh, um, local brewery news. Local, well, kind of actually. Lo lo local beer dispute news. Lo yeah. Local lo local panties ruffled news. <laughs> I guess. Twitter rants. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, this was. Uh, uh, yeah, call me Fernandez. English people call me Fernandez. I'm Portuguese. Okay. <laughs> that's that's probably why I wasn't familiar with the. Uh, with the oh yeah. That, okay. I didn't. Uh, yeah. I saw the first name. Though. <laughs> yep. All right. I went, Jose, no, that's not Jose. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fernandez. You won? All right. All right. Yeah. Anyway, local local news. Uh, Ninkasi. I love Ninkasi Brewery. Ninkasi's a great brewery. They're, they're top three or top four largest mm -hmm. brewery in Oregon. You yep. know, in that. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, them, Deschutes, Widmer, and, and Portland Brewing, and a yeah. couple others. They, they kind of they kind of rotate. Leapfrog, yeah. depending on the year. But Ninkasi, they're down in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, one of my favorite brewers. Um, but, uh, this week, uh, Pete Coors made some snipes directed at the Brewers Association of America. Yes. Uh, the Brewers, or Pete Coors, if you haven't already known from the last name, <laughs> is our head CEO. He's or, the, is he a chairman? Chairman. Chairman, 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 chairman of the Coors Corporation. Yeah, Cheers, Coors Corporation. Yeah. And basically went on, was it Twitter or, uh. uh no, he, he wrote an open no, letter he wrote, to the yeah. association. Yeah. And um, basically explaining What's wrong with mm -hmm. the craft beer industry and and why yeah. the major? Why beer must we all fight, fight with each other? Yeah, why are we fighting with each other? We're just as good as them, and we yeah. produce the exact same quality we, products. We produce craft beer just yeah. like you guys produce craft beer. <laughs> there, there's no such thing as mega beer versus independent we, beer or we, little beer. Yeah, or we or, all fight for the same shelf space. That's right. I think he even said that directly. Yeah. <laughs> We all have a common enemy, the wine industry and yeah. the liquor industry and, and, the, the, and, and the upcoming the marijuana, marijuana industry. Yeah. Like, we need to band together and fight them. Yeah. And let me into your events. <laughs> so, so it was kind of an impassioned letter, but it was full of all the things that craft beer and independent beer 
hate about Mega Beer. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, it was full of the the why are you calling Coors faux craft? We make craft beer. Mm-hmm. We 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 are dedicated to our craft, and and, and you guys are just like using these misnomers yeah. that, Cra- that confuse Cra- the market. Yeah, and craft beer is not about quality beer. It's about just an attitude mm-hmm. and how an attitude basically to screw it to the big guys. Yeah, and you don't even have to have good beer. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, so yeah, the uh, one of the co-owners of Ninkasi. Yeah. Uh, no, the, no. Or, uh, yeah, w- one of the co-owners, and he's also the the co-owner of Ridge Brewing. Oh. Yeah, he, he's a dual ownership. Oh. Okay. Um, uh, Nikos, Nikos Ridge. Yeah, Nikos Ridge um, wasn't going to take that message lying down. Uh, the president and co-author of Eugene Oregon's or co-founder of Eugene Oregon's Ninkasi Brewing, who uh, recently made headlines with our blind taste testing 151 pale ales. Uh, scored very, very highly. Uh, had this to say. There's um, a lot. Yeah, so I, I'm going to read like the top bullet point here, and then we'll go over a couple others uh, uh, in in just like brushing detail. Yeah. Pete Coors, from his open letter, quote, The brewing industry is not exclusively made up of large multi-interna- or multi-international uh, brewers or big brewers or faux craft brewers. And he actually put those in quotes. Cool. Uh, it is not exclusively made up of mass-produced beer, craft brewers, or home brewers. Rather, the beer industry is a combination of large and small brewers, retailers, distributors, and suppliers who are passionate about their craft and committed to their businesses. And they are passionate about competing for the millions of American consumers who love beer. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you. <laughs> Two dollar donation. For oh, Chris. hey! I was like, "What is that blue line? I can't read on this. I have a smaller screen than Jeff." Mm-hmm. Yeah, John has a chat window about this big. I have half of a twenty-seven. Yeah, I was like, half the time I'm just like looking. Hey, there we go. Oh, I can see now. That's cool. So, uh, Chris Baker, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Nikos Ridge had this to say: "Correct. The problem arises when certain tiers within the industry, large multi-international brewers, work to obscure the origins and manipulate the market to their advantage." By distinguishing beer brands as craft and using the market power and tactics available to huge organizations, you deliberately mislead customers and damage the industry as a whole. Um, End quote. Uh, So basically, Coors came out and said, look, we're all just beer makers here. Let's get down to brass hacks. We all just make beer. And whatever you call it is your own thing. But my beer is the same as your beer. And whether I'm a multi-international corporation with the reaching power, the likes of which the world has never seen when it comes to a beverage industry, or you're a local brewery who has a regional distribution, we're the same. Yeah, we're the same. It doesn't matter if I manipulate the market and buy out the hops and the grain farms that you can no longer have access to. Right. Now, don't worry about that. That's just me competing. Right. And you have to just work as hard as I'm working. Right. Or whether you're, you're Keystone Light and you, and you are, you know, we have a heritage in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. And, and, you know, go grab a stone. Yeah. To, uh, to edge stone brewing out of the market. Or well, you go up and you buy Lagunitas or you buy Blue Moon. Yeah. Or you buy any... Uh, any number you buy a green e- flash e- even even yeah or even local right next to you hot valley yeah hot valley is now owned by miller Coors. that's right so yeah but we're all the same yeah <laughs> it's yeah so and it, it is complete and utter bullcrap it, it, it was complete <laughs> it's cool nikos ridge goes yep. almost almost quote for quote with this guy just breaks it down yeah and, he, and, he breaks down every single paragraph and tells him how full of crap Pete Coors is. <laughs> and uh, down in the video description, I have linked both this overline from, from uh, Paste Magazine as well as the full open letters from both people, from, <laughs> from both Pete and, and Nikos. Go read the full it, open letters. It's a great read. Because they are fantastic. And, and they exemplify the problem that we have today in the beer industry as a whole, but in independent brewers versus mega brewers. Yep. Um, there is a separation. There is market confusion from from the big brewers saying, "Well, we make craft beer too." Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that Blue Moon mm-hmm. is craft. We mm-hmm. spend tons of time. All right, put hours and hours into it. And and that's not to say some of the um, 
breweries that have been bought up by mega beers, a, a la Lagunitas, yeah. they can't make a good beer occasionally. No. It, they, it, they, they have some pretty solid beers. Yeah, out. no, that that's the thing. So a lot of times, the, it's all around how the deal is structured. Mm-hmm. But like we were talking about Blue Moon. Blue Moon was created as a sub-child of Coors. Like, right. You know, so it, it wasn't a bought-out brewery. It mm-hmm. was... We need to compete with the right. craft beer market. Right. So we're gonna make a craft we're beer. We're gonna make a Belgian light. Yeah, we're or gonna a make Belgian a Belgian wheat. We're gonna make a Belgian <laughs> wheat and how do we market this so people don't think it's coors? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's just call it a different brewery. Let's right. let's go and make a sub business. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, now you have the Blue Moon, which is a subsidiary of Miller Coors. Yeah. Um and and their commercials are completely different branding. Yeah. Um, it, it's uh, you know you, you look at a at a Coors Light commercial or a, or a Miller you know Taste the Rockies or yeah. anything like that. Jean Claude Van Damme doing the splits. Or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You know uh, you know brewed cooled ship ship cold. ship colder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, you know uh, you you watch all of their marketing materials and then you watch the marketing materials for Blue Moon. It looks very craft. Where it where it it is. Uh, Artisan. Uh, yeah, it's artisan. It's That's artisan. a great it's word artisan. for it. Um, y- you see the guy going and picking the grains himself yeah. and, and, and sitting in like a, a, a single vat brewery yeah. with... Uh, a, s- a small, uh, a, uh, a little farm in the background yeah. and he's zesting the oranges and, by And he's hand. peeling an orange. Yeah, yeah, you know. And he does it. He all he just makes one glass and yeah. he's like, this is perfect. Right. You know, it's the it's the Sam Adams, you know, cracking the... Yeah. <laughs> No, that's bull. <laughs> so, there's the the rest of that pint. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's. I drink it. I I, I, drink I it. wouldn't I wouldn't buy it again. I might just as something to have in the fridge if it was inexpensive. It's yeah, just, well, it's, uh, it's got I, a flavor unlike anything that I have in my fridge, and it's not a bad. No, flavor. it's not a bad flavor, no. but. Uh, I, I guess yeah for the for the size and the price mm-hmm. I was thinking about buying out the uh, marketplace that I had it they only had like eight or nine left but hello then, from Australia get us get us some, <laughs> get us some beer <laughs> we just where were you like fifteen Dylan, minutes ago go, go back and watch my show about ten minutes yes. ago get me some of the James Squire the Rec Preservation Ale please I don't care how you pressurize the growlette and ship it to me but get me some I, I will, will pay, pay for it yeah exactly. <laughs> Get me some of that. Free Patreon for life for you, sir, if you do this. <laughs> uh, but seriously, thank you for watching. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> so, but yeah, like I said, uh, it's an okay beer. It's an okay. It, it's it's a, it's a drinkable lawnmower beer. Yeah, I, I agree. It is. What I do like, actually, there's just been that big, hazy IPA craze that's been going mm-hmm. around. Yeah. I just had too much. Yeah. Too much of that. And too much of the milkshake, too much of the New England. Yeah. And I was just like, I want to go back to something easy drinking, something yeah. classic. A blonde, a, a really nice Northwest and, IPA. And and while this is easy drinking, um, I see why they went out of business. Because while it doesn't take like any tastes like anything I have in my fridge, it's not unique. No, it's not unique, and it is not like Oh, this is a very well balanced version of this beer. Mm-hmm. You know, I can. I was like, I've had homebrews. I was like, yeah, this tastes just like a homebrew right. a friend of mine made. It's right. Nothing. Nothing special. Yeah. You know, um, it's four and a half percent. It's it's not. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's got nice clarity and nice carbonation. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give them that. There right. you go. That's that's all they get. It's better than a Coors, but honestly, I'll, I'd actually drink a Blue Moon above this. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I would for the price, yeah, I would do. Or, or a fat tire. Fat. Or a, I would, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd probably go New Belgium, uh, but yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of the New England IPAs, New, uh, yeah, the right. hazy IPAs that we're tired of. That we're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I just found it today. Uh, and I thought it was really cool because actually I was thinking of, man, how could I brew yep. uh, a beer like this? Yep. And I, I did think of a way to do this. Yep. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be the first one to do it. And I'm going to take it on... Jeff's show and my show, <laughs> and then someone went and beat me to it. It's like, screw you guys. And they're going to make a clear IPA. Yeah. Yeah, clear IPA uh, in a collaboration between Springdale Beer and Against the Grain. Uh, they are coming up with a clear New England IPA. New England Isle. Uh, which is typically the the hazy IPA. Yeah. Uh, the IPA that you pick up and you s- you see the cloud in it. Yeah, it's, it usually looks like juice almost because right. you, you couldn't see through it. It's right. so hazy. 
Uh, they said it's four, it, it's like a real thick cider almost. Yeah, like, it, like the look of it. Yeah, it's uh, four pounds per barrel, uh, four mm-hmm. pounds of hops per barrel. Mm-hmm. So in a barrel's 33, 35 gallons, but four pounds is a lot. When I, you got to understand a standard IPA or something mm-hmm. like that for a homebrewer, five gallons, two ounces, you know. Yeah. Yep. And exactly. that's going to be an aggressive hop. Yeah. Uh, you know, so th- that's... Um. I, I'm I'm definitely interested in trying this. I, 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 <laughs> I, I'm betting it's, again, as soon as I saw this, I was like, hmm, this is going to be like the Crystal Pepsi of beer. <laughs> That's what this is going to be like. Yeah. And they even state that it's not going to be clear. It's just going to be as clear as it can be. Right. As they're trying to make it be. I, yeah. I don't think this is, the picture that's shown here, I don't think that's the beer. Right. I am I bet that's Photoshop. Right. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because it's not white, it's not clear. It's it's got like a yellow yellowish yeah, tint to it. Yeah, kind of. It may be. Um, but yeah, it's the uh, Springdale Beer Any IPA in collaboration with Against the Grain out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, clear view, clear version of the New England IPA. Um, so yeah, um, remember, beer is fun and sometimes also clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Connolly, Springdale General Manager, was so, going to say. But if I can find it, I, I'll, I'm going to buy it. Actually, yeah. I, I love Against the Grain. They actually do some pretty yes. cool retro uh, art on their cannings. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some cool stuff. I even had some at the uh, a keg of their t- on the tap room. Mm-hmm. The tap room. It, it actually even had an IPA contest for all Oregon IPAs, and then again, and then theirs, and theirs beat all the Oregon IPAs. Yeah, which is really surprising. Yeah, because Oregon, Oregon makes IPAs. IPAs. <laughs> Looks yeah. like vodka. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it doesn't taste like... Although, I wonder what hot... Vo- you know I have some hot whiskey at home. Really? I should bring that the next time. Hmm. Yeah. So, or is it whiskey or... I'm pretty sure it's whiskey. I don't think it's yeah. scotch. Hmm. But yeah, I'll bring what, some... What, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, oh, gosh. It's so old. It's because it, it's all right tasting, but you can't mix it with anything. Right. So, I, I, I drink, you know, a shot at a time. Right. Uh, I want to say it's not Rasputin... I know the logo of it is, it looks like the Reservoir Dogs cover. So it looks like a bunch of guys in suits walking. It's okay. all black, white, mm-hmm. matte. Um, oh, top of my head, I forget what it's called. Okay. Cool. Um, I got to be honest with you, as we transition over to tech news, I actually forgot to read this article. Did you? <laughs> so I'm going to let you take the uh, reins on 7 I, I posted this. <laughs> I know you uh, this did. Is the, I posted this like a week, like the day after yeah. last week's episode. I was like, hey, I found yeah. it. This will be great because I'm going to forget it. I actually went through and read them all today again, and and I completely glossed over this one. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, this, I just uh, uh, found it was funny because – so. I don't know how many of you guys use 7-Zip, you know, mm-hmm. next to the WinZip yep. uh, operating system to zip up some files, you know. Yep. Um, but they f- it's very old, very retro. It's been around since, like, what, Windows 95? Yeah, 7-Zip uh, started as a DOS-based uh, version and, and eventually went into a GUI-based version somewhere around Windows 95, Windows 98. Yeah. Um, uh, not not associated with PKZip, which was the original compression algorithm mm-hmm. um, that, that ZIP files are based off of. Um, but yeah, they've they've been around for a very long time. And in yeah. fact, Seven Zip is my compression program of choice. Um, oh, that's, uh, well, I, uh, you should read this article. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the article and I'm oh, that's a good one. I'll put it on there. And 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 what's funny is I just read like the headline and and, and like the first couple of sentences and I went okay, cool. And I threw yeah. it on the. And then today I'm going back through the articles and and I went oh yeah okay so, you know vulnerability cool. But I was so concerned with getting all the facts with some of our other articles in, I forgot to read this <laughs> one again. Um, but yeah, essentially they said that uh, they found a bug in 7-Zip all the way to the second the version of 18.05. Yeah, the which current is current version. Uh, no, no, they just... Or one, did, one back. One back, okay. one back. So that if you have anything but the very latest current version, which mm-hmm. I think they released like a week or two ago, yeah. because of this... You are vulnerable. Now, it is very unlikely, they said, that you're going to be hacked. Essentially, what it is is someone... I, 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 again, I forgot to read this today because I read it a week ago. So I was like, oh, I got this, and Jeff's going to know more about this <laughs> than I will. Um, yeah. But uh, essentially, they found a way that someone can compress... Uh, it, if a virus can stay in here and still be fine and all your virus scanners 
will not see the virus. Mm -hmm. And um, you could essentially be downloading something harmful. Mm -hmm. right. But you have to do something very, very elaborate yeah. to bypass the 7-zip you know, security system in there. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, they said they haven't found anyone reporting any errors, but be careful. If you have 7-zip, which a couple of you have already said you do, go download the latest version right now. Um, I do Win WinWare too. Yeah, uh, most people I know are, are on WinWare. I like 7-Zip um, because it gives you all of the really weird um, uh, compressions as well. Um, I also deal with some Linux stuff from time to okay. time, and so I can un unzip the uh, the dot... Oh, God, I'm drawing a blank on the, the package compression. No, dot DZ or mm. whatever the... Uh, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Forgive me. Um, but yeah, I, I like 7-Zip because it does every single algorithm, compression algorithm yeah, that's out there. I think they even, but I, I love what those like third or second to last paragraph. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the solution is simple. Go to 7-Zip.org, download the latest version. Mm -hmm. It's tiny. Yep. <laughs> and install it. Boom. Problem solved. And you'll be pleased to know that the hot new version of 7-Zip looks exactly <laughs> the same old crappy one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, this is interesting. Uh... Again, sorry, I can't, can't read your name, but Craft Computing found something cool today with Intel XTU tuning utility. I can undervolt my i7-8700 non-K on, on a locked H370i motherboard, and temps are much lower with a negative uh, 100, uh, 100 millivolt offset. Uh, so that is interesting. Uh, for someone who doesn't want to delid, um, I have heard of many, many people undervolting uh, CPUs and GPUs and getting exact same clock speed out of them and same stability um, but at a at a lower voltage, which means lower heat output. Hmm. The, the more current you put into something, the more heat you generate. So, yeah. Um, that is interesting. I'm, I might have to experiment with that in the uh, Intel XTU. Next video! <laughs> yeah. No, not the next video. The next video is behind me yeah. on the, uh, the counter. If you there. can figure it out. <laughs> if you can figure out what my next video <laughs> it's is. It's Jeff playing the ukulele. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't make me grab <laughs> Uh, this no. one's all you. This one's all me. This, this one is you. all me. I, all I read you. this one in it, very, very fine detail. I, many, many I read like a couple paragraphs yeah. like, nope, that's Jeff. Yep. Jeff's going to be talking about <laughs> that one. So, boy, Intel, uh, they are just making loads of headlines and not the ones that they want this year. Uh, from Spectre and Meltdown to... Um, their thermal inter interface material again causing problems with overclocking on the 8700K and 8600K respectively um, to uh, crashing to supply issues with, with motherboards to not releasing more inexpensive motherboards to the public. Um, Intel has reportedly suspended H310 chipset sales uh, due to tight 14 nanometer capacity. Um, and 14 nanometer is their current fab process, uh, which they've been on since 2014. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, 14 nanometer is how small they can make their fabrication process. And uh, starting in 2014 with, I believe, was it Haswell? It was 14 nanometer? Um, it was their, their four or 5,000 series chips. They went to 14 nanometer for their scale. Uh, down from 22 nanometer, I believe. Um, and so the, the smaller the number, the smaller the, the size of the package you're dealing okay. with, the more components you can add to a single die. Um, and, and the more efficient it is, the lower your heat, the et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the smaller you get, the better you are. The better you are. Um, starting with 2014 with the 14 nanometer, um, at, they've always had their chipsets, which is the, the component on your motherboard that actually... Um, talks to your CPU on the motherboard and, and does all the communication for the CPU to the, yeah, Haswell, thank you. Uh, Haswell was the first 14 nanometer. Um, the, the chipset is what integrate, or, uh, takes your CPU and lets it talk to, you, talk to your motherboard and all your components. Um, they have always lagged behind in their fab process due to cost savings and supply. Um, so with Haswell, it was 14 nanometer on the CPU itself, and they were 22 nanometer on the chipset. Mm. And then they shrunk, I believe, to 18 nanometer or, or 17 or something like that um, with the the with two generations later with uh, uh, with Skylake, 
Well, now with Kaby Lake, they're on the same 14 nanometer process as their CPUs because they can't progress. They've been having so many problems with 14 nanometer process that they can't advance it to 10 nanometer. Um, the, they're having problems with that 10 nanometer uh, architecture. They can't make it any smaller. They're, they're running into so many problems with their current build, the way they design their processors. They, they can't do it. Um, so their chipsets have caught up to their CPUs. And what that's causing is that's causing supply, pro supply problems because they make all their 14 nanometer fabs in the same factory. Well, when your chipsets are now competing with your own CPUs, you're, running, you're gonna run out of material. You're, you're gonna run out of supply that you can actually provide from the factory. Because let's say you make 100,000 wafers a month, that used to be 100,000 wafers of your chipset and 100,000 wafers of your CPU. Well, you're cutting your, your uh, product down in half, or the, the, the right in half, essentially. Right. The, exactly. Yeah. Now that they're on the same process, there's only one factory that makes those 14 nanometer fabs for yeah. Intel. <laughs> so now they're making 100,000 of whatever they churn out. Um, and so they have announced that they're uh, suspending the supply of their brand new H310 chipset because it's on the bottom of, the, of their supply chain uh, due to 14 nanometer supply capacity. Um, and they've also again delayed their uh, 10 nanometer volume production to mid-2019. So they are so behind the eight ball on getting this going, on, on advancing their, their chipset. Meanwhile, AMD, which... Intel was kicking the crap out of AMD for five or six or eight years. Basically since like 2011, Intel has, hold, has held the market share. And AMD's just been kind of slowly improving and slowly making sure their engineering is, is sound. And with the release of Zen, they showed that they are taking a completely new approach to how they designed CPUs. They said, what works in a CPU and what doesn't work in a CPU? Let's take out the crap that doesn't work that we don't need to worry about and let's just go in this new direction. And, that, and that's exactly what Zen has done. Um, and, and you can definitely see it with their second generation processors. Mm. If you haven't tried a second gen Ryzen, good. I, I, I love the second gen Ryzen. Or, yeah, you've been or, chatting them up half the time yeah. behind the scenes <laughs> all over. Lo love the, the new Ryzen chips. <clears throat> um, in fact, I have a 2600 yeah, was like, behind like, you right there to test. I, I thought. So, yeah, uh, so love the new Ryzen chips. Um, but... Uh, AMD in their labs today has a seven nanometer <laughs> Ryzen 2 chip that they're testing for mass production starting next March. <laughs> so all of a sudden AMD, which has been absolutely no one in the marketplace, has it's leapfrogged Intel. Way ahead of uh, and Intel. And next year they will release a better process than Intel has on their current chips. Oh e God. Even their next gen chips. Because yeah. Intel's looking at moving from 14 to 10. Ryzen is moving from 12 down to 7 for their process, which means they are going to be more energy efficient, less latency. Um, and and we, we've seen that the, the way they're designing their processors is really unique and innovative. Um, whereas Intel, their core architecture has been the same architecture since 2008 with the release of the Core, the core i7 X58 yeah. chipsets. Um, they've been basically just refining that core architecture for 10 years now. Whereas Zen, they said FX, no, screw that. We're done with that. We're done with FX. We're done with, with milling around with that. Let's go a completely new direction. Zen 2 is going to be amazing. Um, everything that I've heard, um, both from industry insiders and also meeting with AMD themselves, Zen 2 is going to be amazing. Um, we should see on par IPC with Intel, but even more density on their chips, which means more cores, more threads, less less heat, less, less heat, uh, more efficient. Uh, yeah, quite literally, the tables are turning. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Intel's kind of behind the eight ball here, uh, and the problem Intel got into is they've been the market leader for so long, and they've just been skating by. They've just been skating by. Um, I'm going to use a sports analogy here. The teams that win in the playoffs, whether it's basketball or football or whoever else, aren't the teams that um, get a huge lead and then just kind of sit on that lead. Yeah. Because when you get into the playoffs, you start playing evenly matched teams. And what matters in football and in basketball 
is how well you play with a lead. If you can get up 21 points, can you hold on to those 21 yeah. points? Uh, right now, Intel's been kicking the crap out of AMD for the last five years. Well, AMD hasn't been just sitting on their hands. Mm-hmm. Um, Intel hasn't been playing very well with the lead, and now they're actually in a position where they're going to be behind. Well, yeah, they, they keep it like, oh, they can gain a point here. They can gain a point. We're yeah. so far ahead. We're so far. Oh, blah, blah, Zen? Blah, blah, what is blah, blah, What is that? Yeah. Oh, uh, we're going to score a point. Look how fast we scored these you know, yeah. points. Yeah. Technical terms. But, you know, we're going to make leaps and bounds in technology just as fast as, and look at the money that we have compared to AMD and the people mm-hmm. that want to work for Intel for us yep. obviously want to work for us instead of AMD. So this brightest mm-hmm. and smartest people are going to come to us and not work for yep. AMD because we can pay them, you know. Oh, great. I, I irritated the, uh, the computer crowd. <laughs> no, not sports analogies. Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Beer, tech, and sports. What is this show becoming? <laughs> I am a huge sports fan for everything except baseball. Um, I even watch soccer. Really? I, I, I can't. I can't <laughs> get into soccer. My work. We have like this yeah. sixty-five inch plaster. I think it's even bigger than that. In the break room, I swear it's soccer nonstop. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just World Cup. This and it doesn't even have to be in English. And they'll just oh. find a channel. Yep. And it's it's soccer or golf. Yep. And I, I don't watch golf either. That's it, the one it, I can't. It's soccer yeah. or golf, and uh, it, there's no... What's funny is, so we have that, but then we have sweet tickets to uh, the Motor Center. Yeah. So we do that, but we the don't... The Rose Garden. Yeah, with well, the Rose Garden. <laughs> but so we don't watch basketball games mm-hmm. or football games on there or, you know, college basketball or any of those sorts. Nope, it's soccer or golf. Mm-hmm. Maybe only because it's on during the day. Yeah. That's probably why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Very rarely for the 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 top sports. So so the the football and the and the basketball. Are you on at one in the afternoon on a Tuesday? Uh, baseball, absolutely, every single day. There there's some we live on the West Coast, so there's games that tip there's, off at mm, nine a.m. Yeah, here. Uh, so that that that, that <laughs> Chris five dollars sports sports. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 All right. We, that that uh, the power of Christ <laughs> compels you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, that, sorry. <laughs> that whiskey I was talking about, Steve found it. It's uh, Rasputin's hopped whiskey. Okay, okay. So interesting. Yeah, so I'll, I'll bring it. I'll bring it the next time. Yeah, and we'll have a couple of. May, maybe Joe will be on. <laughs> Reverend, two dollars. Need more Star Trek. I yeah. agree. We do need more Star Trek. Yep. Yep. <laughs> We have Star Trek news at the end. Don't you worry. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. I found this earlier today, too. <laughs> we got it coming. Um, anyway, speaking of... Back to Intel. Back to Intel. Um, uh, as I was saying, Intel's behind the eight ball, and this next article kind of proves that point. Yeah. Um, Intel has posted a job uh, posting. Did. Did post a job. Yeah. Already has posted a job. That hints at an overhaul to the mm. to their core architecture. So their what's become known as the core i i three i five i seven, um, which again has been their architecture since the release of the x fifty eight oh eight two thousand eight yeah yeah uh, the x fifty eight chipset with the core i seven. Um, so uh, Intel has already hired some top talent, um, including let me scroll down here, uh, Jim, Jim Keller. Keller. Who is the architect for Zen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did I talk about? Money? <laughs> yeah. I'll pay you X. Right. Now, Jim Keller jumping ship from AMD to uh, over to Intel is not surprising news. And the reason I say that is Jim Keller designed the, the core for Zen, des- designed the architecture behind it. He then left AMD in 2016 to go work for Tesla. Um, and apparently he is a serial job jumper. Where he will like walk into a company, say, "Here's the direction for your company's processors and and internal architecture and market plan and whatnot for the next ten years. Please write me my check. I'll be gone in twelve months." Yeah, uh, that's what he does, and he's very very good at it. Um, and if you have a success rate of doing it, yeah. then uh, he's also previously worked for Apple and and was one of the core designers for their A4 and A5 processors when Apple went in house with their ARM design. So again, this is not new territory yeah. for him. Uh, jumping ship to work on a competitor's product. 
Um, but uh, they'll probably go to Intel. Then it'll probably yep. go to uh, Google, <laughs> right? Uh, or Facebook if or they Facebook. ever pull their their own butts out of the fire. <laughs> they got enough problems. Um, but uh, uh, now it has now that Intel has Keller, it has also recently nabbed the vice president of AMD's Radeon Technology Group, Raja Kaduri. Um, which was big news because uh, we didn't see him going anywhere. Uh, they've also hired AMD's marketing head, Chris Hook. Um, so Intel has literally gone out and they've poached some of the top talent at AMD. Now, again, Jim Keller, not a surprise, but the other two kind of were um, that they were able to, to, uh, to well, poach them. I wonder if this is Intel's way of like cutting off the head of the snake of, okay, look, in, uh, AMD can only go so far now because these guys were the main drive behind them. So now if we have them, AMD can't go past what's there, what what they're about to release. No, because there, there's refinements you can make to the Zen architecture. Yeah. There, there's so much further that, that hey, they can go with that. Vlad, like thank you, buddy. Uh, as I was finishing up a build, I went to connect my USB 3 connector to the motherboard and broke a pin. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and Coke is bad. I agree. <laughs> oh, oh, Pepsi Coke or Coca Cola or Coke Coke. <laughs> Hard to say. Hard to say with Vlad. I, I never know what he's talking about. <laughs> Next thing you know, Cyrix is back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a Cyrix processor. Do you? I have a Cyrix 133 megahertz, uh, which was one of the competitors to the the uh, the uh, 486 DX2, uh, and and also the original uh, Pentium 90. Um, I've also got a very early AMD chip. I have an AMD slot A. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, I, I got some old stuff. Um. This is actually kind of local news, too. Yes. Uh, for, for those who don't know, Intel's headquarters is in Beaverton, Oregon. Yeah. Um, I've been on their campus a couple of times. I um, have to drive by every now and then, too. Yeah. Um, I, yeah I've, I've taken a couple classes there. I've been there for a couple conferences. Uh, yeah. So these are all people who have moved to Oregon recently. Yep. <laughs> Just up the road from me. Craft uh, Coke. Craft Coke. <laughs> uh, what is this, GTA all of a sudden? It's not legal yet. <laughs> Cool. Ooh, he, he, uh, Osgeld has an AMD 8088. Ooh. Nice. I do not have one of those. I do have a couple uh, Intel 386 CPUs. I've got a 38620 and a 38633. IBM. Um, yep. Which Cyrix and IBM are back. I don't have any IBM processors, although I do have a Motorola G4 processor. I think my dad might have a couple IBM processors lying around. That'd be pretty cool. He has just a like a closet full of old stuff. Yep. Just, I remember he used to raid it, and I don't think he's ever thrown any of it away. I think every time we he, we've always moved, it's just all right. There's Dad's computer closet, right? And it's always stayed. You know, he's got like towers that are like this big in there. Oh yeah, like, yeah, that's my server. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. I, I've had a couple. Of, in fact, I still have. Oh god, who makes it? Um, there's a server case that I have upstairs. That is about that deep and about yeah, that Oh, tall. yeah, yeah. And Literally, then, if I put it in front of me, it would take up this frame. Yeah. Yeah, um, he, he was... I remember him talking to me, and this was probably about 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 100 gigabyte hard drives that are easily soft. I'm like, wow, 100 gigs? That's like yeah. Nothing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kiko, FX Designs, is an i7-5820K. That's actually what's in that computer behind John. Not the little one, but the one... That one. That's a 5820K. Love the 5820K. That one. Yep. It's got, look at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. There it is. If you haven't seen it by now, you're not going to see it again. Have you heard the IBM Model M keyboard is back? Yes. I did see the Linus video, and in fact, I kind of trolled the Linus video in my most recent Modder Zinc video. <laughs> Um, I, I said for those uh, IBM Model M fans, this board has a PS2 port on it. Just alluding <laughs> to the fact that, that he goes, they're back, baby! <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, wasn't sure if anyone at Modders Inc. caught it, but if you're watching, it's in the video. Sorry. <laughs> it was a tongue-in-cheek comment. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, uh, what's funny about the 8086, and it, even if you get into like the 486, where you could just like slap a heatsink onto the mm -hmm. CPU, not even a fan, 
the hard drive was the loudest component in those. In those, those so you turn it on and you go click, and and your power supply fan would come on, and then there's no other sound, and then about six seconds later the hard drive has been up and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the noise I remember right there. And and then you've got the the five and a quarter and the three and a half inch drives start start reading their th- throwing their hands all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We always get into vintage talk too. <laughs> uh, that's the good old days. All right. Yeah. So the the program I wrote. Uh, for a couple of people, I, I for their logins, I always have War Games, the movie. Uh, that's that's their interest, that music yeah. or, or tone. Would you like to play a game? I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Yes. It's like certain people. I was like, oh, when you log in, you'll always hear this. Uh, Bryce, love to see you on float plane. Um, I've thought about it. Um, I was actually meaning to talk to Luke. When I was at CES, and in fact, I ran into him once, but I ran into him just in passing, and I didn't have time to strike up that conversation. It was like, hi, Luke. Bye, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I was hoping to talk to him about, like, how do I, as like an aspiring creator um, who is hoping to do this full time eventually, um, how do I get into that? And how do I start doing, you know, YouTube and float plane at the same time? That kind of thing. Um Ooh, Osgel just picked up a Compact 486DX250 for a buck today. And its hard drive sounds like a blender. All 170 <laughs> megs of it. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I was meaning to talk to Luke. I would love to join Floatplane at some point. But they've been very guarded with their information. And uh, the one opportunity I had to talk to Luke about it in person... Uh, I didn't get the opportunity to talk to him mm. about it. So um, I'm hoping to strike up that conversation eventually. Um, I've, I've been hoping to like reach out to him through someone in the industry so he knows I'm serious instead of just like the random Twitter guy. I want to get on float plane. Because at this point, let's let's be honest, I only have 52,000 subscribers. I am just the random guy on Twitter still. Oh, yeah. He yep. knows who I am. <laughs> He, he yeah he watches he watches hops and brews <laughs> the butter fan he didn't find you through me yeah. <laughs> that's what i was like ah you score yeah, and, and unfortunately luke fan. is one of the people that i compete with on wednesdays when i i chose wednesdays because i don't compete with linus on fridays and i don't compete with awesome hardware on tuesdays and at the time, Jay was not streaming. And then, in fact, Jay is now streaming on Thursday. So it's like, yes! Uh, I, <laughs> I own Wednesdays, except for Luke doing his game streams. So, sorry, Luke. We're, we're on at the same time. <laughs> Speaking of games. Speaking, speaking of, of game games. News, and let, me, game. let me finish this real quick. All right. Yeah. We, can, we can do that. And So, anyone have a Switch? I have a Switch. I don't have a Switch. Um, you have a... I have a 3ds. You have a 3ds. <laughs> What's well, but I have a Switch. I I enjoy yeah. it for the uh, the random gaming, the little time that I do have mm-hmm. now, the late nights, and yep. it is quite fun. Um, but Switch or Nintendo is basically saying the virtual console. <laughs> that if you've ever owned a, any other, kind of basically Nintendo for the past eight to if, ten years, if you've owned a Wii or, Wii, or a Wii, Wii U, U, any of the last two or three consoles, yeah. Um, there used to be something called the Virtual Console, where you could go and download all your favorite classic NES, Super NES, GameCube. Um, they even made some of the games just for uh-huh. the Virtual Console, yep. like the Final Fantasy uh, remakes or whatever. So they're telling that Nintendo Switch is going to go away from that and go more toward their very own Netflix subscription style, but only for mm. NES games. Right. Um, yeah, so they, uh, and there's, there's been rumors for about the last month or so that there's a GameCube virtual console, yeah. um, ready to launch. Like it's, it's fully fledged. They've got a, a working emulator in place. It's ready to go, but Nintendo doesn't want to release it. They don't want to, uh, the market's too hot for everything else right now. So we'll wait, we'll wait for a lull or we'll wait for the Nintendo actually came out and said, we're not going to release Virtual Console for the Switch, and we're not going to release any systems besides NES yeah. for the Switch, which is 
freaking stupid. Oh yeah, because everyone that ever buys a, a new console, they always like, you know what? I want to play that. I, I ju they just released the new Zelda. I want to play the Zelda I grew up with. Yeah, I, I want to play. I want to play Wind Waker. I want to play pl Metroid Prime. Exactly. Um, I want to play Time Splitters Two. I want to play all the Mario Kart. Right. I want to. You know. I mm -hmm. want to go through that and play them all. And I will pay the nine dollars, the five dollars, the two dollars that they're going to charge me to do it every time. <laughs> Um, but no, they're saying we, no. We got a cheers from Vlad. I don't watch those cookie cutter streams. I like this one because you guys enjoy beer and whiskey like men, not catering to the 15 year olds like Linus. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got hair on my chest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, somewhere. Um, it's somewhere there. It's yeah, like exactly. one or two. So um, again, I aim to be a family friendly show, but I I'm, I'm not aiming to appease the 13 year olds in the crowd. I I, I do expect my viewers to. Uh, to know something, to have some life experience. If you don't, that's totally cool. And and I like to think my content can will, justify both. It can, balances. Can, can, can go with both because I'll I'll talk at an intermediate level, but I'll use all the correct terminology. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can find out. If you do know what I'm talking about, we're already on the same page. We can move on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the other co-hosts that know way less than Jeff, <laughs> and basically we're for the dumb people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sorry, since we got off topic, uh, someone, uh, oh, uh, someone said, I always wanted one of those Western digital black velociraptors. I have an 80 gig velociraptor. Oh, really? Um, I don't have it here. It's actually on my shelf at work. It's one of the, the things that I bought. Um, before I started my channel and started like my, my vintage collection behind me, um, I took a lot of my vintage stuff to work to my desk. And so I've got a vintage shelf behind me on my desk. Um, I've got a G3 iBook on there. Um, I've got a uh, I've got a Velociraptor Black. Um, that's where my processor and RAM collection is at. So I, I'm actually going to bring that home so I can like bring those up. It will be one notice. of the, the the back displays. Yeah, um, I've got some EDO RAM. Ooh, <laughs> big boys. Like 256 kilobytes yeah. per per stick. Yeah. Um, back when you put eight DIMMs and got two megs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got some of that. Totally rode up and like, yes, I'm fully stocked. Oh, yeah, I got ten minutes. Yes, that's right. Um, so yeah, someone said just just build a retro pie and screw the virtual console. And speaking of, if you haven't seen my my retro yeah, pie video, like, go watch my retro pie video. Saying, like Jeff, didn't you already do a video just? Like I may that. have just done instructions on building oh. your own retro pie using a Raspberry Pi. Um, anyway, uh, speaking of retro emulation since nintendo is not going to appease the fans if you don't give the consumers what they want they will find out a way to get what they want oh yeah we've seen this in the music industry with with torrents and and going all the way back to napster and things like mm -hmm. that we've seen this with the video industry with torrents where finally netflix goes you know what we just need to release all of the content for a reasonable price that's deliverable everywhere and then people will pay it yeah and absolutely i still pay for netflix even I though still i still watch it. a movie or two a month maybe well I don't, on it. I don't pay i just use my in-laws account right <laughs> right but they're still getting money. but they're still getting money right yeah whereas before the mpa wasn't getting a dime from all the torrents and and everything else that that people are doing um but again, you give them what they want at a reasonable price and you make it affordable and and uh, viewable. Don't just say, oh, you can have Netflix, but you can only watch it if you own a Wii U. Yeah, that's it's, uh, it's horrible. Or you can have Netflix, but exclusively on Samsung smart TVs. No, well, that crap doesn't work. Well, yeah, we, we even talked about, uh, I think, I don't know, a couple episodes ago, <laughs> of them, like, people are starting to already hack the Wii, the, the Switch, mm -hmm. and it's hardware-based, but it is getting to the point to where people are will continue to hack it, and then right. people will just wait, like, oh, you're not going to release for us? We'll just wait for a hacked version then. Right. Um, did I bring up that tweet? I did. Um, so, oh, yeah. Um, so, we talked a couple of weeks ago about a, a vulnerability that was discovered in the Switch. Not just in the Switch, but in the Tegra X1 CPU that powers the Switch. Um, it's a vulnerability in the boot ROM system, where if you take pin 10 on one of the jumpers and you ground it out, it will unlock the bootloader for you. Yeah. And you put in your own SD card and you boot whatever the hell you want to boot. Um, with whatever you want. With yeah. you want it, whatever you want. And so, immediately... There's people running LXD Linux. Uh, there's people running um, 
a uh, bunch, of, bunch of different things. This was tweeted out by one of the developers of Dolphin, which if you don't know what Dolphin yeah, is... Yeah, if you don't know what Dolphin is, yeah. Uh, this is a picture of the Switch running Dolphin, which is a GameCube and Wii emulator. And and the best one around. And yep. Probably the best piece of emulation software that exists. Um, it is rock solid stable. And uh, so he posted a picture of Mario Sunshine running on a Switch. Um, and there's been a couple other video uploads of people porting over the Linux version of Dolphin to the Switch uh, and getting 25 frames per second on average. So you're just this shy of being able to play it fully a couple optimizations and you're there. Yeah, so it, it's not far away. So, and it would be in Nintendo's best interest to just like, right. you know what, let's just give them what they want and we'll make some money off of it. Right, too. exactly. If you don't allow people what they want on the hardware that's capable of it, they will find a way to break you. Yeah. Um, the, the 3DS was for the longest time thought uncrackable. All of a sudden, you can crack the 3DS software-based and, and load whatever games you want off an SD card. Or you can buy one of these guys. I don't own that. What are you talking about? What? Yeah. <laughs> <We're too quick. laughs> uh, you can buy a, a flash card and, and you can run up to the current version. I'm running legit firmware on an uncracked uh, 3DS and I'm playing all of the games that I want off an SD card. Yeah. Um, so I won't... Uh, mor morally, I won't crack current hardware, but I love cracking last generation hardware. <laughs> Um, uh, craft computing yeah, story just, on the Nintendo is incorrect. In an email they sent uh, some company regarding the VC said they will not be introducing Virtual Console Banner, but will have older game. They've, they've said they will have older games, gold. but it's going to going to be a subscription based service. And at this time, they are only releasing NES, NES games. Yeah, and that that's what we're talking about. Right. That it's only for one older system, yeah. to where a lot more people are going to want the Super Nintendo. The GameCube, the SNES, right. or, or the 64, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they want some of the Game Boy uh, right. games as well. What what Nintendo is doing is they're saying, we're not going to charge you $10 for Duck Hunt anymore, or for, for the what? original Mario Brothers anymore, because yeah. that's freaking stupid. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to charge you $10 a month, and we're going to open our library of NES games to you. Yeah. But only NES games. But only NES. And until, that... until the market gets to a certain point, and then what we'll do is we'll have a five... Your $10 subscription gets you NES. And then for $5 more a month, we'll that, unlock SNES. That's... And then for another $10, we'll unlock N64. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, they've you're... got a monthly subscription service that you're paying 25 bucks because it's only 10 bucks at a time or yeah. 5 bucks at a time. I guarantee that's what's going to happen. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Is you have to have the base package of NES games, and then you're going to add on what you want later on. Yeah. Which explains the existence of a, of a virtual console with, uh, for GameCube. Um, and this may or may not be a good or a bad thing, going to a subscription service for games. No, so um, I, I like that idea, but I think the way that they're going to head to it, and the way mm -hmm. it's looking like they're heading toward... Mm -hmm. Is annoying and I'm not gonna like it. I right. like the idea of a subscription-based mm -hmm. game for their classic games. That that would be fun, you know. And I wouldn't mind. I think uh, NES to probably probably N64. Right. That should be the ten dollar mark. Right. Uh, absolutely. And then I, I and, agree with and you. then five dollars, maybe another for fifteen. Give me the GameCube. Give me, give me, right. give me the higher end. Give me games. the higher end games. Right. Fifteen dollars a month is probably where I would. Cap it out. Thank you, sir. You're all. Um, that's where I would really cap it out. All right, beer number two today. Getting really good at that. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, Fort George's uh, Thousand Years of Silence. Yep. It is a Mexican uh, in spiced uh, imperial stout. Jeff had this. You won't be drinking this one. Yes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it. Jeff, you had this already. He believes so. At, at the, no, I did have this you did one. Have this, this is one of the first ones I drank, so okay. I do remember this one. Uh, yeah. This was at the Fort George Festival of the Dark Arts. Yeah, you had this one. Steve's already had this one, so I was like, oh, you didn't give me, like, anything. I gave you some. You're such a baby sometimes. You get the aggressive pour on it. That's right. So look, after the head, we're... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> With the head! <laughs> it's like, oh, we're even. You want a little more? Yeah, I'll take a little more, because it's... Like, I know, there we go, we're good. There we go. It's your show, I'll give you a little more. Even though it's my beer. But... Yeah. <laughs> Very good beer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it smells fantastic. I, if you, you probably can't see how Here, fine... I, it's... Yeah, I got it, yeah. All right, yeah, switch the camera over. There you go. There we go. Can, does this autofocus? Uh, it should. All right. I don't remember. 
very fine bubbles though. Yep. Yeah, very, 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 very fine, thick, yep. uh, creamy. Mm. Oh, that's good. And I like that we were able to let it warm up too. Yes. This this is cold. This this beer should not be served cold. No. This is actually a really good temperature. It's it's still got that quick little chilled flavor to it. Yeah, it, it's probably about forty five degrees between forty five and fifty. Yeah. Uh, so. Ideally, this this is a beer that should be served if you're just gonna pour it and drink it. Probably around fifty five. Yeah. Um. So we're, we're a little cold. We're a little still, but... a little cold still, but it, you know it's it's nice. Right. Uh. Ooh. Small. But I like that the fact that they actually tell you how much they only make. They only make eight point <laughs> five barrels of. Someone caught the chicken in a biscuit box on the corner <laughs> of my desk. <laughs> What? what? <laughs> <coughs> 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 yeah, I, I keep snacks and whatnot over there. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like this. Is yeah, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic stout. Beer. They only they release it once a year mm -hmm. during the Dark Arts Festival, and yep. then basically, if your bottle shop, hat, local bottle shop, ends up having it, they're sold out really soon. The one I go to, they end up buying a lot. And they only release half at like a half or a quarter at a time. Nice. And then a couple months later, they release another couple amount. So it's fun. Yep. All right, couple more uh, newsworthy things to get Checks. to, just real quick, and we'll get into kind of a Q and A session here. Probably about ten minutes or so, yep. I would guess, because um, I, I I love doing Q and A with you guys. It's a lot of fun. That's where it gets really interesting, <laughs> yeah. especially when we're like two or three <laughs> drinks into it. That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, so real quick, uh, Windows 10 1804, which is the April update for Windows 10, is apparently crashing with, uh, with some Intel-based SSDs. Um, this is the Intel 600P and 600P Pro models. Um, and Microsoft is now denying the Windows 10 update to any computer that has this SSD installed. Uh, basically what it does is it corrupts the UEFI boot sector mm -hmm. on the drive and makes your system unusable. Uh, it is repairable um, through a, a UEFI boot repair process, um, but not with the current Intel drive. So there's there's some mix up with the Intel firmware or the way that Intel handles their, their controller chip versus the way that Microsoft expects the UEFI boot to work within Windows. Um, <laughs> so a little bit of a hiccup for Microsoft. Uh, it, this has happened some their updates, oh gosh, they've just been having so much trouble with their updates. Well, um, I, I don't think I've mentioned this on the show before, but uh, I, I know Barnacles has talked about this in length. Uh, Microsoft, a couple of years ago, fired the bulk of their QA department, their quality assurance, their their internal testing house. Um, they, they used to have a very extensive testing unit for, for Windows Server, and they had a, a decently extensive... Uh, a testing house for Windows updates. And basically what it was is just tons and tons of different builds of computers where they would test all their software, test all of their updates, even security patches would go through this litany of tests before it ever hit you to, to mitigate any potential issues for any hardware incompatibility, any firmware mismatches, anything that would cause you a problem on your hardware. And so if you install the Windows update, it may cause a problem with some ancillary piece of tech mm -hmm. that you have, some very unique niche product. But for the most part, for the general Johnny Q public, it was going to be fine. Um, they, You are now the test sector. You are now the beta testers. You are now the... Uh, uh, I will be updating the, the description to include the second beer and the third Possibly and the fourth, third, if we, fourth, if we, fourth if we get, if we get to them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Windows 10 made you the beta testers. Exactly. Yeah. Windows 10 reporting made the customers the beta testers. Yeah. Uh, it was a cost saving measure. Make no doubt about that. I was going to ask, did they fire them just before they released Vista? <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they employed them all the way through the life of Windows 7. As oh. soon as Windows 7 was dead, they fired everyone. Oh, I was going to say, well, they, they probably hired them after Vista. I was like, mm -hmm. well, we need this now. So, yeah. Um, <coughs> so as such, we're seeing so many different updates from Microsoft that are rolling out that an update rolls out and it causes problems with a RAID controller on a server and it borks a server or it co corrupts an Intel SSD or it um, 
blue screens if you have a certain revision of an NVIDIA GTX 970, or if you're running this really weird medical device, it now corrupts that. What are you doing? I need to fulfill <laughs> my own social media. Okay. Yeah. I have followers, Gosh. too. <laughs> Don't show all the boxes in the background. <laughs> no one on here follows me. Make, make your make your pictures appealing. <laughs> Some people like that. Make, it's like craft chic. That's right. <laughs> hey, craft, been here since 4K. Keep it going, man. Thank you. I love my new camera. Oh god, I love my new camera. I don't think he was talking about 4K resolution. Yeah. Oh, since 4,000. 4,000. Yeah. Well, it was actually about the same point. About the time that I hit 4,000 subscribers is also the time I started recording in 4k well yeah but i think your new lens really showcased it love the new lenses yeah love the new the new setup but thank you you've been here a while i've uh, been here since late january early february yeah beginning of the year basically yeah. so i grew quickly yeah you did so um but anyway so yeah microsoft made you the beta tester um it sucks because I, i'm a systems administrator by by day and uh, the other component of this is Microsoft also made Windows updates uh, required, and they took the control of Windows updates out of your hands. Yeah. Because, John, what did you do whenever it said, oh, you have updates waiting? No! Wait. Yep. Postpone. Delay. Oh, yeah, I'll do that in a week. No yeah. problem. Remind <laughs> me Remind, remind me, me tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Um, we all do the same thing. And the problem was with Windows XP and with a lot of vulnerabilities that happened in those days is people would just go, I don't want to update. Now. I don't want to update. Yeah, turn, turn, do turn off updates. Right. Um, so it, it's the kind of thing where they, they did the worst possible thing at the worst possible time with the worst possible OS. Yeah. Um, where they made you the testers and then they forced the updates upon you. Um, and then they're doing, uh, uh, mitigation steps mm, okay. after the fact. Yeah. yeah. That's the word I was looking for. That they're, they're patching things that they break after they're already in the wild, which is not the way you release software. Um, but it seems to be the way that the way of the future, they're going to release yes. software. So. Who yeah. knows? Ask me how I feel about Windows Update policies now. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, my, my work... Well, it's thanks is my work is we still run... Unfortunately, we well, actually... Thankfully, end of this month, we won't be running it anymore. But till the end of this month, we have been running a Windows 95 and a Windows 98... Or Office uh, 95 and Office 98 yeah. software. And so every update mm -hmm. ends up corrupting that and we have to reinstall it on everyone's computer. Mm -hmm. So almost every other week we're sitting there, oh my gosh, the new Windows update screwed us again. Yep. Um, someone brought up a point of price and I've, I've, I've talked about this in the comment section before. Uh, well, to be fair, I paid like $14 for Windows 10. Um, in the United States... Windows 10 is a $100 product. Yeah. It's a $100 upgrade if you already own if you the product. Own the, well, you, if, if it's yeah. an OEM build where you've built a computer and you are OEMing the product, it's $120. If you don't already own a Microsoft operating system and you didn't just build a computer, it's $200. Read the licensing. That That's all licensing. It's what, are, what machine are you installing on and what are you installing it over the top of? You technically cannot buy an OEM license and upgrade Windows 7. Everyone does it all the time because, well, you can. Um, but that's technically against the licensing agreement. Um, Microsoft has done something really stupid where they sell the same product in other regions for different prices. Yeah. And uh, uh, my, my viewers in Australia, I'm sure you sympathize with this. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to everything where all of a sudden it's... 110 US dollars for a game where we're paying $60 for it. Yeah. Simply because you're a different market and you'll pay that. Um, and uh, Europe, we, yeah. We are more and more a global economy. We know what things are priced elsewhere. And if you will sell a Windows 10 professional license for $14 in another economy because that's what their economy can bear, 
I'll buy that license and I'll and I'll and I'll bring it in. I'll and bring there's it US in. companies that'll import those license keys and they'll sell them to US citizens and I'll unsell it on myself for fourteen dollars or ten dollars. And it's or, completely fine. And it's completely fine. I've talked to a Microsoft rep about this directly. Like yeah. like sat down across the table from one and said, What about all these licenses? And he goes, They're completely legit. Yeah, they're completely all you have to do is We don't it. we don't sell them in this market for that. Yeah. But you can buy them from out of market and the and key, the key is completely legit. It's completely legit. We won't shut it down. Now yeah. there are some shady sites out there that will sell you already used keys and yeah. some other so make sure you're buying if you're gonna do that, buy it right. correct and do your little bit of research. And really there's just a little bit of just, usually it's just like, oh, adjust your default language because it mm-hmm. defaults it to that. <laughs> language mm-hmm. you just it is just paying I don't attention. speak aborigine yeah it, it's just <laughs> pay attention during the setup that's it that's yeah. all it is oh no I want English instead and I want my keyboard style to be right to in, be US English to be US done. English done and then I'm good to go yep time code oh my, my time is actually Pacific uh, Dylan says hell yeah I paid 120 Australian uh, for a new game and it's trash <laughs> See, again I know your market and I'm sorry I, I wish I could do more for you tell you what you get me that beer, I will export games to you. Yeah. Dylan, we, we, we can do a trade here. We can here. do this. We can make this happen. We could. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway... <laughs> Don't patronize him. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it could be a good day for, <laughs> That's right. for the both of us. We will totally make that happen. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, Microsoft is trying to play both sides of the fence where they're going, oh, we'll, we'll sell a, a, a Southeast Asian license for $14, but it's the same exact product. Um, and as Americans, we go, well, I can buy that product for $14 from a reseller for, for $14. Why would I pay $120 in U.S. stores? Yeah. Again, it's totally fine. Um, hello from Croatia. Hello. Whoa. <laughs> I love hearing where you are at. So let me know. <laughs> I'm next door. Yeah. <laughs> Look out your window. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it, it sucks. And, and a lot of companies are doing this. It's not just Microsoft. I, I don't mean to point them out, although they're one of the biggest ones that are doing it. Apple does this. They they'll charge they'll charge like three thousand U.S. dollars in another market for the same two thousand dollar laptop. Yeah. Um. So will Dell. So will a lot of these other companies. Um. Because they'll go, oh, the market will bear that over there, or only the rich buy it over there anyway. So let's charge them way way more than what everyone else can afford, even though the average person might be able to afford it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. We can make more money doing it this way. Some games are regionally locked, but that, that, yeah. that's usually when you're downloading digital copies and digital keys, I believe. Right, exactly. Um, Goodoldgames.com. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of games, when I saw this article, one game came to mind. Never sent beer before, but I'll try. Ooh, please do, please do, yeah. please do. If you can figure out a way. Um, the, the, the thing about a Growlet is it, it's going to need to be pressurized. And we're gonna need you know, to figure no, out. No, 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 no. I have a system at home I can recarbonate. So you can send it flat. Oh, that's right. Send it flat. Oh, that's right. If you want to send it flat, you'll be fine. And I can repressurize it. That's I forgot you had that. Yeah, we can we can throw yeah. some CO two back if into you, it. If you can if you can ship it um, in one of the flip top seal bottles. Flip top seal bottle. You can even send it in like a, a plastic soda fact, bottle. I, I have an example. Let me grab yeah. let me grab one of those bottles right so, now. So uh, I just I just happen to have. A lot of home brewing and brewing equipment that recharges flat beers and and uh, essentially it's kind of like the soda stream that you can you know introduce co2 but the beer even if it's flat should sustain fine as long as it's within a certain temperature hey those are interesting bottles yeah one of them is anyway <laughs> one of them is um if you can get some of these these are called flip top seal bottles where they have a cork that comes over the top and then you clamp it down like that you can ship beer in these very, very yep. easily. And if yep. you're worried about it, electrical tape around the top. Yep. And it will not come off. Oh, and it's nice, thick glass, yeah. too. So it's really uh, hard they, to break. These are rated up to like 15 PSI or something yeah. like that. So they'll, they'll survive air flight. Um, so, yeah. If you can get some of these bottles, you can ship beer almost anywhere. Ah. You know, there's actually another beer article I was going to post. Uh-huh. It was local that... Oregon is going to be implementing a new... Oh, refillable bottles. Refillable bottles. I saw that. Yeah. I almost posted I, yeah. one too, but we had enough beer news. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> I did the same thing. 
Uh, hello from Nepal. Hello from Seattle. Hello from Florida. Hello from Earth. Cheater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello from Portland. Hello, local guy. Hey. Um, we might have even run into each other. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Humble Bundle's great too. Yeah, GOG and Humble Bundle are, are my two go-tos for DRM-free or near DRM-free. So, sometimes Humble Bundle's DRM-free. Sometimes they're they're tied in with Ubisoft or or Steam or something like that. But Humble Bundle's also a great place to buy. Um, live in Pinellas Park, seven years now in Panama City. Hmm. Um, Tampa area, very cool. Hello all around the world. That's yes, awesome. Yes, hello. Um, so, uh, but yeah, seriously, Dylan, if, if you want to do this and if you're interested in like doing some kind of trade or whatnot, oh, we'll, which we'll, you totally we, are. We, yeah. <laughs> we will send you stuff too. Games I'll, 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 or... send, I'll send you beer. I'll send you hardware. I'll send you 21. software well, no. as long as uh, you're no, 21. No, 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 no. Australia's 18. 18. That's 18. right. 18. That's right. So yeah, Dylan, seriously, if you can do that, I, I will ship you like some Northwest IPAs or whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you want to drink. Whatever you want to drink. Yep. Although I I think earlier he said he drinks uh, um, like Miller and Stella, so we'll give you something better than that. We'll get you something better than that 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 will not sour your palate. Yeah, we, we can be we, like we've got some entry craft beers. Here, we can get here to. is the craft version of these beers. Right, exactly. So we can totally do that. But seriously, uh, look in my about section and email me, and and we will totally do something. Uh, Cigar City in Tampa, Madison, Wisconsin, Wichita, Kansas. Cigar, not Steve. Steve. Steve's not in Cigar City. Cigar City in Tampa <laughs> is a brewery. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I didn't realize it was Steve. Yeah. Dang it, Steve. Uh, Sparta, Tennessee. Tennessee. Home Orange. of Calf Killer Brewery. Calf Killer Brewery. Oh, yeah, he was talking about how cool yep. of a name that was earlier you were talking, but I, I read it. Uh, uh, Kilby, you manage Norvac Electronics in Beaverton? I shopped in that store. Oh really? I know exactly. You, you were in. Uh, you were just off Washington Square in the industrial uh, loop, right next to Cannon and a couple other shops that are down there. I know exactly where you were at. Very cool. Thank you for watching. I wonder if that's why Cigar City, if they got bought out, they recently have been announcing a lot of uh, expanding in their distribution, and I'm mm -hmm. betting that's why. I did not know they got bought out. Interesting. But, uh, yeah. Thanks for time. They make some awesome. Uh, again, like this Fort George, some in. <coughs> incredible tobacco infused stuff. yes yeah uh so it was it was those are fantastic my brother actually lives down in tampa yep uh let's see we got an orange county stockton california western north carolina or worst western nc i'm assuming north, north carolina. carolina western north carolina hello from the alpha quadrant southeast portland oregon the alpha card they, they see your computer <laughs> yeah <laughs> southeast portland hello hello missoula montana very nice. Very cool. Welcome. Um, so uh, we've talked about net neutrality quite a bit, especially on some earlier episodes yes. when it was uh, all the rage. None of you probably watched those because <laughs> that was back in November and December. But uh, when net neutrality was being killed, um, the I, I don't talk politics very much, but one of the houses or one of the sides of our two-party system... Um, is uh, very close to forcing a vote to repeal net neutrality. And, uh, excuse me, um, today was the red alert for net neutrality. Yep. Uh, so you probably saw this sign up a lot. And you probably this, thought it was spam right, or, or ad, ad Right, exactly. It's a terrible design. Yeah. Terrible design. Um, what this was was uh, bringing more awareness to the fact that net neutrality is not dead. It has taken effect... But there's still an oversight committee that oversees the FCC in Congress that can bring this to a vote and repeal that that order from the FCC. Yeah. Um, this is what this this is. So um, today and tomorrow, call your local congressman if you live in the United States. Even if you don't, call someone in the United States. Call a congressman. Call call some legislative body. Say this is stupid. And say this is stupid because this will affect international data migration. Um, it's not we won't be able to go. We well, we could have the option to not be able to go to sites outside or right. wherever. If uh, let's say you have Comcast Internet, and I brought this up before, let's say you have Comcast Internet, and Comcast decides that they want to tie in with Vimeo, and and Vimeo says, oh, we're going to do this video streaming service, um, and so Com Vimeo gives Comcast a bunch of money, and Vi Comcast now carries exclusively Vimeo for your video streaming needs. 
That no, means you do not get access to YouTube and you do not get access to Netflix. Yep. Or Twitch or... Yeah. Or, or any other or, video streaming or, 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 service yeah, that you yeah, want. Yeah. Unless they sit there and dump right. a bunch of money into Comcast too. Which exactly. Then it's probably going to go against Vimeo's contract. Yeah. So at, at this point, if you don't know what net neutrality is, do your research. I'm telling you, net neutrality is a good thing. There's a great Burger King commercial about it. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, we did it again. Yeah. Uh, it's a great explanation. A quick... This is the yeah. basic of net neutrality. Yeah. Too bad we didn't have the pull. Yeah. I just uh, that that was based on the net neutrality speeds, but oh, there there, yeah. the, the, there right. there's uh, there's paying for faster internet and there's paying for exclusive use internet, and then there's also the ability for your ISP to say no 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 we're not going to carry them because they didn't write us a check. Yeah. So if Netflix doesn't write Comcast a big enough check, Comcast just won't carry Netflix. Yeah. Next year. Think think of this like your cable or satellite. In, instead, company. you'll get streaming from Xfinity. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. Yeah, just think of this as your cable satellite channel of of this. You can only get this channel with this company. Right. So you have to, or you have to pay extra. Comcast Sportsnet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bringing NFL, this back around to the sports Net, analogy. NFL Network. Or whatever. What? Unless I have my local cable provider giving me TV, I cannot watch Blazer games in my house. I cannot watch it on any satellite provider. Um, if I subscribe to NBA TV... Uh, which is the internet provider, they black out Blazer games because I'm not a Comcast subscriber. That's how asinine this is. Yeah. And that's what net neutrality <laughs> protects. Again, I, it won't protect that in particular, but, but it'll protect the, the internet version of that. Yeah. It, that's the idea of it. Yep. Um, even though we only live a couple minutes away from watching it live. Mm-hmm. The Burger King commercial is flawed because you could just as easily go to a different burger place. Uh <laughs> If we lived in a perfect market, I could just as easily switch from Comcast to Cox or yes, from but I love, or Verizon. Yeah, or, but I'm already at Burger King. Right. <laughs> I'm there now. Right. So, yeah. And let's face Do it. your research. Call your congressmen. Call your local representatives. Call your state representatives as well. Uh, your, your in-state congress. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and let them know you're thinking about this because they have direct ties that they talk to... The, the the state representatives for the national level as well. So call your local representatives, call your governor, call anyone you can and let them know this is crap. Yep. So uh, last bit of gaming news and then we're going to get into Q, uh, Q&A. And this, this ties back to the, the beginning of the episode. Star Trek! Star Trek! <laughs> uh, we are not nerds on this show whatsoever. Um, not, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Nothing. You, you see nothing. Yeah, you there, see there's, nothing. There's, 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 what, what do I, oh, I just got the ukulele behind me. Yeah, I, I so. got the Star Trek chest. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, um, uh, so, and, and this appeals to, to my growing this is Well, this is why I posted this, and I was like, uh, <laughs> even I want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. This, is, this would be so much fun, because I... Yeah, go ahead. Go yep. do it. Uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which started as a PlayStation exclusive, is now on Oculus Rift HTC Vive uh, on Steam. Uh, is announcing a next generation uh, DLC on May 22nd. The next generation. I know, right? That's, that's, <laughs> you just shut up and yeah. check my money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am become Fry. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is introducing the Enterprise D Bert. as a playable environment and, and also introducing new missions. And you're going to be able to play as Picard or Worf or yeah. Riker or. Whoever else you get on the to, Enterprise D. You get to sit at the chair. That's right. it. You get to sit at the chair. The chair. <laughs> the chair. That is the command chair. Yes. Of command. Actually, even in the... in There's a couple other pictures, but the leather even looks cheap and warm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I don't know if you can see it in the, the image here, but the, the, the leather is all wrinkled on the side yeah. of this chair. And it's that vintage 90, like, Nine, vinyl look vinyl, to it. Yeah, it's like, this is pleather. Yeah. How I like to call it. <laughs> yeah. It's bonded leather. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's fantastic. Uh, I, I will say, I think there's another screenshot of, like, the screen or, or the monitor. Yeah. And uh, they, they didn't seem to really capture that aspect of it. Yeah. Um... There it is, that yeah. one. The, the the front of the the it looks the, a little small. The to main my viewer, eyes. yeah. It to looks, my it eyes, looks, it looks a little small. It looks a little narrow. I remember it probably being yeah, you know, probably more around the edge over here. Actually, you know, honestly, I don't remember two doors. I thought it was just Picard's office. So so some people are coming up now. Uh, Captain Janeway for life. No, and Captain Cisco is a badass. Yeah, he's all right. 
I love you, Cisco. You love Cisco. I love Cisco. Was I it, got a soft spot. Was it for you Cisco. or I think it was Rhett? Rhett loves Cisco just because he stuck it to Picard. Yeah, in the very first episode. Yeah, and yeah, that was Rhett because uh, he, here's a, here's a brand new guy in a brand new series who is literally giving the middle finger to one of my childhood heroes. Yeah. And, and yeah, so Cisco's a badass. Uh, we've met before at Wolf Three Five Nine. Yeah, you don't need to be on my station. Good day, sir. Yeah, I said good day. Yeah, that was Cisco. So, yeah. Um, Although late later on in the series, I didn't like Cisco. I loved Cisco's development. I loved how he went. I I didn't. That was the thing. It was like the last season or two seasons, basically when Dra- Dax died. Yeah. The the and then he became the prophet even more so. And then he started yeah. directing episodes. Yeah. To where I'm in the dream and I don't. I'm in a '50s writer and it's. He started getting into racial politics. Yeah. And I was like, this, no, this but, is bad. But see, you say that, but Star Trek has always been politically aware of the current climate. But that was, yeah. They have always but no, done that. No, but, okay, have you ever seen the, the movie, Cap- I think it was called Captains or in, something? In, in, yes, I've seen the movie yeah, Captains. And he's yeah. just weird. He's just talking yeah. about... Oh, Avery Brooks is weird. Yeah. I, I don't doubt that. And, and if you see that movie, his attitude, and then you go and watch that sh- that yeah. ep- those episodes you're like wow okay he co-wrote or co-directed yeah. this and that really shines through. but but i mean if, if you look at political awareness they've always dealt with issues of racism and and uh economy yeah. inequality yeah yes um they had the first lesbian kiss on primetime tv yes yes but on I, broadcast I, I think TV. i think they handled it better yeah than than how he handled a couple of the deal yeah. now i will say though and also ds9 i think would have tanked if they didn't bring Worf on, I think I think um, the, I think the first two no, I think they would have still done okay. I think bringing Worf on uh, made it last longer, made it complete. I yeah, and, 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 it, and it tied in and it made those fans, mm-hmm. it, it made those crossover fans a lot easier because I yes. have I have an awareness and mm-hmm. uh, they kept bringing the Riker clone brother or whatever the transporter yeah. clone brother. Yeah. Uh, they brought in Q on an episode or two. Ooh, that's a hard arc, uh, hierarchy. No. Cisco, Picard, Kirk, Archer, Janeway. No, no. Archer. Janeway's above Archer. Janeway was above Archer. Janeway's above Janeway's Archer. Janeway's above Archer. It's Picard, Kirk, Cisco, Janeway, Archer. I'll agree. Yeah. I'll agree. Um, I think, and, and I've gone on record as saying this, I think DS9 is the best Star Trek series from beginning to end in storytelling in, in the universe that it created for itself. I thought the the episodes were more cohesive and I thought it told a better story. I love the uh, I love DS9. Next generation, second original series, third. Um, but I think Picard is the better captain than Cisco. So, so uh, yeah, I I see your point. I, I, I see as that. a whole as a, TV as a show, whole TV DS9 show, was the best iteration. DS9 of is a better representation, but as someone mm-hmm. just coming in. Mm-hmm. Next gen is a good. I can watch one episode. I get it. That's true. I and I and I, and with, I don't with DS nine. Uh, there's, and, there's and, a story people, you have to follow, right? And people forget how many episodes there were. There's 27 episodes per season, and there's seven seasons. Yeah. And so if I jump into season four, getting into the Dominion War, I can't watch episode ten. I have to watch 27 hours of television. Yeah. To watch that season. And that that's where I think that's where I have to disagree is yeah. next gen is the superior only now the the cheesier stories I get that first yes. two see you said this earlier too. You said season I think it was four four, and, four through seven. Yeah, no are I, incredible. No, three through seven are incredible. One and two are crap of next gen. One and two are Well crap. if you're gonna bring Locutus into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, oh, Tasha Yar was a hottie. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Yeah. There were more hot people on Star Trek than Tasha Yar, though. I'm yeah, sorry, that, Tasha. That, yeah. Although, I'm sorry. I love you, Tasha. Tasha, yeah. You weren't my first love. No, you were not my first love. Now that I'm in my 30s, I'm, I'm more recently awakened. <laughs> <laughs> I should say. But you weren't, you weren't my first love. Not, no. not, 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 uh, and, and. What's funny is Next Generation was very 90s, like, soccer mom hot. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, oh yeah, because he had you, you had, had a doctor, you had Crusher, you yeah. had Troy, you had you had yeah. It, it, it was it was Troy and Crusher were always the the two. It was Troy. It was really Troy. It was Troy. It was Troy because she, they always gave her the single bodysuit, and Crusher had the the right. The, she had the robe, the robe, and, and, everything. Yeah. and that was there. But Crusher had the single bodysuit, and then yeah. in later episodes too, they kind of took yeah. some padding away and made right. it more formal, more form fitting, form fitting. Um, I gotta say. When they introduced, uh, who was that? Um, uh, Low Raren. Oh Low yeah, Row Ro Yeah, excuse me, Row Laren. Uh, that that was mine. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. That, that's my heartthrob. <laughs> is is Row Laren the Bajoran? So yeah, she was a Riker's crush for yes. like a season or two. Yeah. I think she was only in one season, right? Wasn't she? She was in two seasons. Two, I believe. Yeah, it was. It was wasn't too long, but yeah. yeah. And uh, Will Wheaton. Will yeah. <laughs> You know, Will Wheaton actually makes a pretty good beer. He does. He does. So. That's right. Um, yeah. All right. Q and A. Uh, if you Q and A. We have or, talked enough. Yeah. Um, or, or if you just want to continue bullshitting about book whatever. So for about- Na- so I'll, I'll get you the first point while you're typing your questions in. Fernandez brought up the point yeah. of um, uh, why would you put a 1050 Ti into a 2400G? And I get this question a lot, and I see it a lot in the in the comments. Um, why did you buy an APU and then you put a, a graphics card with it? Um, the reason being is ignore the fact that it's APU. Ignore that entirely. Do you realize every single Intel CPU has integrated graphics? Okay, do you, just wrap your mind around that. Every single Intel CPU has integrated graphics on it, um, except some of those Xeons. Mm. Um, now, we don't consider it... Um, uh, graphics. Uh, uh, Nimoy 007. Oh, I love that tag. I love that handle. Nimoy 007. <laughs> <laughs> Props to your series higher. All right, there Again, we go. you can't argue it. No. Because if you look at it, you know, empirically, that is the hierarchy. Um, seven of nine melted screens and other things. <laughs> I will. I will say uh, that is one thing that kept me watching Voyager. Watch some interviews with with Kate Mulgrew talking about when Seven of Nine came on the show, because uh, th- there's there's some interviews with her and there's some con talks with her where she's talking about uh, where the producers were talking to her and Harry and Tom about losing weight. Oh yeah. Where uh, um, um, uh, they they were like every, every single year they came came and got fittings for for uniforms and they'd let out one size. And, and whatnot, and the producers actually had to tell them, "You guys need to start losing weight because you're on rations. You don't have unlimited replicator out in yeah. space. You guys are like you gaining guys, yeah. thirty pounds." <laughs> and and then uh, and then they said, "And then some of us were allowed to wear form fitting clothes to accentuate certain body parts." <laughs> <laughs> Not going to mention any names, but um, uh, but anyway, why would you add a 1050 Ti to a 2400G? The reason is the 2400G is a kick-ass four-core, eight-threaded CPU that happens to have a Vega 11 graphics card tied into the CPU. That doesn't mean that's the graphics card you have to use. And that doesn't mean you're tied to a single platform. And that doesn't mean you're paying more for that platform. Yeah. For the 159 price of the 2400G or the $99 price of the 2200G, which is the better value, the 2200G is a kick-ass CPU for 100 bucks. <laughs> I love that CPU. Um, and I love it even if it didn't come with the Vega graphics, the Vega 8 graphics on board. It's a great CPU. Um, when you throw a, a dedicated graphics on top of it, they are outperforming their <laughs> Intel counterparts. <laughs> oh, yes. Seven of nine is the original thread ripper. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. That's fine. Ugh. Um, but yes, so that is why. Ignore the fact that it's a 2400G APU with Vega graphics and go, am I happy with a Vega 11 for a graphics card mm. or would I rather have a 1050 Ti? Knowing that I bought the, the 2400 CPU for $159 and it happens to have Vega graphics on board. It's still a better price CPU than the i3-8100 at... Um, at 120, 120 bucks, or the 8350K at $170. It's a better value CPU than both of those, excluding the graphics card. Now, if you just want GT 1030 results, it'll give you that. If you want to add a 1050 Ti or a 1060, 
it is totally the, the CPU to get at both $100 and $160. Those are what you get. The graphics cards editions just add to that value. Yeah. That's why. Uh, what are our personal rigs? Uh, my personal rig is a Threadripper 1900X, 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum running at 3066. Um, with a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive. Um, and a one terabyte uh, SATA solid state drive, as well as my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I went first. Yeah, I went first for a reason. Um, I've also got a GTX 1080 for the win from EVGA. Uh, that is my personal rig. That's my editing machine. It's running right there. I yeah. love it. Um, next week it will be in a different case. Ooh, should I grab that? Should I grab that? I should grab that. Where's it at? Mine's being rebuilt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I haven't used mine in such a long time because I've been so busy with. So many other projects that uh, it's it's out of date and needs yeah. rebuilding right now. You we'll have just, we'll just leave it at that. You have an i five i seven i seven i seven Ivy Bridge though, yes. right? Thirty seven seventy. Yes, he has a thirty seven seventy and an HD seventy nine fifty. Um, it's out of date. You have a solid state though, right? It, I do have a solid state. Yeah. It's, well, it's only two fifty. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it's not sorry. So, it's not no one terabyte. Right. So, uh, uh, if you haven't watched my Threadripper build, which was posted back in December, um, I'll post that to the video description moving forward, but go watch my Threadripper build because, uh, it's, it was put in that case because I had a, a water block on order and it never showed up and it just never showed up and, and it's a review unit, which I'm really happy to have. Um, but it took a really long time because I wanted a, uh, a certain color scheme on it and they didn't have that color scheme in stock and so it, it just took a long time to get this block um i have a new threadripper tr4 swift tech water block that's black and silver and rgb inside and it is freaking gorgeous and very nice how thing. much do you think that weighs i you haven't oh i don't know not shouldn't be that much so so it's all copper on the black on the back okay i i mean from the look of it it doesn't look like that weighs that much because okay. it's not i want to get your reaction Holy crap. <laughs> That's dense. Yeah. That is just a dense, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that is a block of metal. That is just a block of metal. That's solid. Yeah. It's it's all steel and copper. Two, two, three, maybe? Yeah. Three, three four pounds? Two, two. Not quite. It, it's probably it, a pound, if not more. I would say it's more than a pound. One, I think it's more than a pound. I would say it's more than one. Yeah. Two, two to three is two, two pounds, I probably. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, my Threadripper I built in an Inwin 303. Um, and I and I posted that video, and then it's like, oh, in two weeks I'll get my block in, and I'll I'll do the the hardline water too. No. So that's been put on hold. I've had to test a couple of other coolers, and in fact, I have an air cooler that I have to test for Modern Zinc on my Threadripper build. But I'm going to be transitioning back to the Inwin 303 case, and very soon we are getting my my uh, my Threadripper official hardline water tube build in the books and on display, and it's going to be freaking beautiful. So it's gonna look like a warp core. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have a lot of custom parts in there. I've got a lot of really cool stuff. Um, let's see. Um, OS storage or file storage? Uh, it is different. Vega eleven is better than a ten than, than yes, ten thirty. Yeah. Vega eleven is better than a ten thirty. A Vega eight is just slightly behind it. Um, but again, a Vega eight integrated into your your twenty two hundred G is a kick-ass little combo to game at 1080p, which I've demonstrated on this channel before, and also over on Modders Inc. I had a video where I gamed on that, and the 2200G is a kick-ass little CPU. Yeah. Uh, love my RX 480. Um, remember the Swift Tech cooler. Thermal Ride is still around. Yeah, Thermal Ride is still around. Um, let's see, what other questions do we have? Uh, someone was asking, uh, what's a great 24-inch monitor to go with? Um, all depends on your budget and what you want out of it. There's so many different options out there. Um, this was from like 10 minutes ago. I remember seeing, uh, uh, sorry, my Q9500 doesn't have uh, integrated graphics for some reason. It should. It might be disabled in your BIOS. I'd, I'd bet that. Or, uh, sorry, uh, previous versions of CPUs, if you added a discrete graphics card, it used the same PCIe lanes as the integrated graphics, and so it disabled your integrated graphics. So you couldn't use both at the same time. Modern CPUs, they have uh, uh, PCIe lanes dedicated for both. Mm. So there's there's like a 4x lane going to your integrated graphics, and then there's 16x going to your your 16x slot. Um, 
Is there a better cooler than the Noctua NHU-12S in a smaller size? Jeff probably has one. Keep the conversation going. Oh, yeah, because, because you know, okay, yeah. So, while, you know, Jeff looks through his assortment of spare parts <laughs> here, which you can't see off it's camera. It's somewhere. Which, is, it's huge. Um, I will keep the conversation going by delaying, and delaying even more so. so and I've kept it going, and you're um, welcome. What, what socket are you on? Um, the NHU U12S. Um, the NHU-12S is, I believe, a 65-watt TDP cooler. Um, Full AAT. Uh, there's a new one from Noctua ATM, out. Sorry. Um, there's a new one from Noctua called the NHL9A AM4. So if you have an AM4-based system, again, this is only a 65-watt TDP. So if you're going with like a 1700X or a 2700X, those are 95 and 105-watt. But if you're going the mid-tier, if you're going the 2600 or 2400G or something mm. like that, uh, there's this. This is the NHL9, uh, NHL9A AM4, and this is an AM4-specific mount, but it is only 37 millimeters tall. It is a freaking tiny cooler, and it does a kick-ass job. Uh, socket 1150. Um Noctua does make some low-profile things. Um, in fact, I believe the the NHL Great 9A phone. is available in in that, but it all depends on your TDP, um, what what actual wattage CPU you are, and if you're overclocking. Um, but if you're looking for a good low-profile cooler, NHL 9A. <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't know if you remembered you yeah. had the camera there. Yep. NHL 9A is a great option. Uh, again, I don't remember if they make different socket mounts for this, but I think they do. But it's a 92 millimeter fan, uh, really, really good copper heat sink uh, on the base, heat pipes and everything else. Um, good little cooler. And I've tested this against the uh, the NH uh, U12S, so, uh, and they performed very similarly. Mm. So. <coughs> Oops, sorry. Got back. <laughs> That's a cute little cooler. It is a cute little cooler. It does. It, I, I really liked it. It and looks like it's like made out of wood. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's going to be uh, my wife's new cooler on her ITX box. Um, she has a little ITX box upstairs. Um, and she ha currently has an Ivy Bridge i5, and she's going to be getting my 2400G CPU. Because mm. um, she's going to start doing some video, some rough video editing for me. Um, oh. I'm going to give her my raw footage, and she's going to make the, the rough cuts for me, and rough. then I'll, I'll, I'll do the final edit. Nice. So... Saves you some time. Yep. Um, uh, I5, 4670K. Um, you're going to be hard-pressed to get a low-profile cooler that's going to cool a, a 4670K adequately. Um, most of those, especially if you're overclocked, you're going to be drawing well in excess of 100 watts. Um, in fact, uh, if at 4 gigahertz, I would say you're probably drawing about 110 watts. Um NHL9i is the SKU for Intel. Thank you. Yeah, I, I knew they made one, but I couldn't remember what it was. So yeah. NHL9i mm. uh, is the Intel SKU. But again, that's only a 65-watt TDP on that cooler. Um, they do make a 120 mil cooler, I believe, that is uh, a higher TDP. Um, that, that's also a slimline, but... Slimline coolers are, are rough to get above the, the 65 and 75-watt TDP. So... Uh, any new video teasers, guys? Always look in the back of my yes. videos. Always look in the back. There's uh, you see nothing. everything you see, you see on nothing. my shelves and on my back counter is typically there for a reason. Yes. If you notice, every episode something changes. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Most recent teaser, I bought a Windows Mixed Reality headset. This is the Lenovo Explorer. Um, I picked it up for one ninety nine. Uh, we talked about this too uh, yeah. on previous shows. Yep. Um, I really like this. Uh, Wait till next week. Yep. Uh, that's actually the video that I'm working on right now. Uh, remember Z Zalman Orb Coolers? And of course, <laughs> Jeff has one. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that thing is huge. I do remember Zalman Orb Coolers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, sir. <laughs> Things like a turbine. I happen to have one. <laughs> Uh, 100 mil fan, I believe. Um, but yeah, I, I remember Zalman Orbs. Set that there. Yeah. 
Yeah, as clean as this set looks, yeah. there's a bunch of stuff <laughs> around us. Of like, there's oh, nothing but boxes. Of boxes of stuff. Like, oh, you remember that? Yeah, because it's right yeah, there. Yeah, it's literally right. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about me? I don't remember any of this. Let's see. I found, was planning on using one of the few HP small form factor units. Uh, Scythe Big Shirkin 2. Ha ha! I've reviewed the Big Shirkin 2. Uh, look up literally my third video I ever posted. Um, it's my X79 benchmark video. Um, and I, I did a, I, I built with a Big Shirkin 2. Um, and I believe that one is actually a 90 watt TDP and it's a 120 mil fan. Uh, so that's one of the few that you can get that, that will cool that, that much of a beast. Uh, thank you for reminding me of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scythe, oh, new video. Scythe Big Shirkin 2. That's your low profile cooler. Yes. If you're looking for new videos for me... Someone says for $199 where? That was on the official Microsoft store. Was it? And That's in fact, it? consistently, um, uh, Microsoft has been dropping the prices of Windows Mixed Reality headsets to $199. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Amazon had the Dell headset for, I think, 120 for a little while. The Acer one has dropped down there as well. Most of the, the retail price on them is $349. Mm. Most of them have dropped. Uh, right now, you can get the Acer headset for $260. I think on Amazon, the Dell headset for about 230. Uh, the Lenovo is sitting about 250. But like I said, I picked that up for 199 direct from the Microsoft store. Um, so my next video is how cheap can you get into PC VR gaming? Good PC VR. Good PC, actual mm. PC VR gaming. Yeah, it was good. That was the whole point. What's the, the process? Of good yeah. PC VR. Yeah. Uh, so that computer VR. and that headset, I am into. Eight hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Yep, and it plays Skyrim VR at ninety frames per second. <laughs> Spoiler. Yep. Jeez. You just well, basically... you're gonna watch the video. <laughs> yeah, I know you're gonna watch the video. So. Yeah, because I'm just gonna like watch it, uh, like comment. Yep. This is fun. Great. Uh, let's see. Had one blue LEDs with copper. Yeah, this has a blue LED in it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what ab uh, what about you, John? I don't know what that was in reference to. Oh, he was. I think he was talking about the new new videos for me. Oh yeah, yeah, new videos for me. The the a new video for me. Actually, I'm gonna be trying to do more of beer reviews that are gonna be featured on here. Mm -hmm. So that way, if you guys want more of an in depth view, we do talk a lot about computers and everything for the smaller crowd that is more like, hey, I want to know a little bit more about that beer. Mm -hmm. I will try to be doing more of, hey, we drank this. Go check out John's video if you're looking for more an in-depth review of that beer. So right. uh, next week, Steve and Jeff will be having a very special beer uh, that they talked about mm -hmm. a while ago, a couple episodes ago, yep. a Zelda-themed beer. Yes, it's a Zelda-themed IPA. Yes. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yes. Uh, Craft Computing, was, what was the name of that? Scout again. This is the Fort George Thousand Years of Silence. Yes. It's a Mexican chocolate imperial stout. 10.5%. Um, freaking delicious. Very delicious. Comes out once a year. Yep. Um. And if anyone's looking for beer trade, usually it's me you hit up. Yep. But Jeff, you can hit up too. Yep, that's right. Uh, let's see. What socket is this almond cooler on? That is on a 775. Um, that is a, uh, originally this, what, uh, this is essentially a core two quad Q9400, but it's the Xeon equivalent. I believe it's an X3450, if I remember right. It's a Xeon X3450, I think. It's a it's a 2.66 gigahertz quad core Xeon on a 775. Um, AMD Radeon Pro WX3100 by four will hey, be good for workstations. Out. Yes. Hey, people are commenting on my videos now, That's right, too. that's so right. So I, I got to talk to my people, too. Play some Beat Saber. Um, Beat Saber was going to be an instant buy until it released for $20 with only 10 playable songs. And yeah. I, and I kind of went, eh. I know. I, I thought, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. Jeff's going to have this. I'm going to play it after, yeah. you know, Talking Heads. Uh, they don't have yeah. any good songs. And I was like, eh. So I think it's still a good game. $20 is just a little bit steep for the amount of gameplay that I actually get in per week, though. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, it would be pretty cool if it was, you know, $19.99 for the initial, and then, like, $1.99 a song. Yeah. And then independent people just start releasing right. songs or mixes or beats, 
or or five dollars for an extra ten, or or something you know. like that. If they had you know expansion but, but, packs, but right now there's not the content to keep it going. Now they did release an editor, so people are starting to generate songs. I'm not sure if it's like Steam Workshop compatible yet, but I know people are going to be making their own song playbacks. For yeah, it. but the things I I like that idea, but I still also want to play songs I want to play. Like I want to play it with um, what was the Duel of Fates. Oh yeah! Like how awesome was that? Like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool, right? Yep. I uh, jumped onto the quad core era early with the Q sixty six hundred. That was uh, I've I've had a couple of rigs with that. My brother in law ran that for the longest time. Uh, yeah, for game for gaming, dual cores was all you needed. Absolutely. Uh, Two dollars a song, but Beat Saber is a great game. Dark Souls remaster on PC very soon. I did see that. Yeah, I saw that. Someone is banging through the fire and the flames. No, I <laughs> didn't. No, that would be. Just, it, it, <laughs> yeah, what is that? Like one of those like uh, hibachi chef. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it would be. Yep. Uh, and try as I might, I never got through that. All. No, I never got that. to. I was like, eh, done. <laughs> I was. I was pretty good on Guitar Hero. Uh, I could do I could do hard. Yeah, and I, but I couldn't I, do. I could do expert on on uh, um, rock band. Um, okay. I could do expert on rock band, and I could do hard on most of the Guitar Hero. Stuff. Yeah, most of the Guitar Hero I did hard. Yeah, uh, I usually play through medium, just like okay, I beat it. Now yep. now I'm go I was I pass everything on hard. It wasn't perfect. Yeah, I could do perfect on most things on medium. Yeah, uh, and then rock band. I, or yeah, rock band. I only ever did the drums though. Yeah, see, I, I, I did guitar and bass. Okay. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, I did I did ever... Did you ever pick up... There was the PC one that where you plugged it into your actual guitar? Uh, oh, uh, Rockmaster. Rockmaster. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever play that? I never did. I've looked at doing that because apparently you can get the USB interface for like 10 bucks now. Oh, and I have Rockmaster's like, oh, you. Yeah. I've, I've thought about getting that. I really mm. have. Um, I, I, I thought about throwing it away. Yeah, I, I'd be <laughs> really, really interested in doing that. Yeah. Um... Uh, Eric Del Toro, what would I suggest for a 144p or 1440p 144 hertz monitor that is VESC compatible? Currently looking at the Pixio QX or PX 276. That is exactly the monitor I would recommend. <laughs> exactly. It's like you read my mind. Um, yeah, there's no better value out there than, than the Pixio 276 right now. Uh, great monitor, great price. Um, they are coming out with a 32-inch curved 1440p, 144 hertz that very looks soon. That sweet. They, they announced it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, they announced it at PAX, I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, really, really good stuff coming out from them. I'm, I'm really excited to, to see some stuff from them and possibly get some stuff in hand. Uh, favorite stout? Ooh. Locally... It would probably have to be. I could easily drink the pirate stout. Pirate yeah. stout, I can pirate stout is solid. It is solid. Um, if you're gonna go for like you know, big, you can get it anywhere. Well, uh, Sandy Empire stout. Yeah, San Sandy Empire stout. There's a stout locally here in yep. Salem, Oregon. It's called the Sandy Empire stout. That probably within the Oregon, just I can get it anytime. Um, but you know, the shoots. If I'm just gonna go somewhere, I would mind a Black Butte Porter. Black Butte Porter's really Black Butte solid. Black Porter's is gonna be a really solid beer. Um, my my absolute favorite stout has got to be the New Holland, the the, Dragon, the Dragon's the Dragon's milk. milk Stout. I just got a new version, Did the latest you? version. It's their cherry chocolate bourbon, something like that. Yeah, it's like six dollars for a twelve ounce. You you just checked all of my boxes. <laughs> I will be there for that review. Oh, 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 you think so? <laughs> I am inviting myself. Oh, okay, that's fine. We can do another cocktail too. All right. All right. Um, how long are we going to be streaming for? We usually go two hours, so probably just a couple more minutes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those, those are our favorite stouts. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we both agree. Uh, Sandy Empire Stout, probably the best stout made in Oregon. Yeah, made in Oregon locally. Year um, round. It's it, Year again, round. Yeah. Th this is once a year. It is the Pirate Stout. You can go there to their brewery. They make it all the time, year round. Yeah. Um, they can it, so they distribute it. This is once a year. Eh, you yep. know. The nice part about it, it's a it's a rum barrel aged stout that they produce year round. <laughs> uh, I can't carry a tune if you give me a bucket to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interested in SSD endurance as well, MLC versus 3D NAND. I've never gotten a long enough test to do 
an SSD endurance test. I will tell you, I did kill a one terabyte SSD recently. Um, I killed a one terabyte. Is that the one you got? Um, no, I I, uh, I bought it a couple years ago. Oh. Um, if if you all remember, uh, there was a big kerfuffle about Samsung the 850 Evo SSDs. Um, about oh my god there there's like this thing there's like this bug with the trim support and so they're just writing the same cells over and over and it's like killing the SS the SSDs and so everyone just started like fire sailing their SSDs. Mm. Um, so I got on Craigslist and I found a couple of these 850 Evo SSDs and I paid the guy one hundred twenty dollars for two of them two one terabyte 850 Evos. Okay. And this was like two and a half years ago. That's a steal. So back when they were like six hundred dollars yeah, a pop. You probably like, these are hot. I don't care. I don't care. No, what it was was they came out. There, there was a bug that was announced that said these drives will die within the next six months, and everyone is like convinced of that. The problem was no one read far enough into the bug to read what it actually was, and what it actually was was a trim error. Uh, which, for those who don't know, trim is an SSD. Uh, uh, algorithm that it writes every single cell, every single pass through the drive. Um, so if if this pass I'm writing cells two and eight, the next pass I'm going to write cells three and seven. Mm -hmm. um, and so I make sure that every cell gets a bit of data before I write the next cell. Um, and it helps with SSD endurance because you can only write to the cell so many times. Um, but there was this bug with the trim where it was just writing to the same cells over and over and is killing SSDs prematurely. What it was was a bug in the Linux kernel that was patched like two months later. <laughs> so everyone fire sailed these SSDs for really dirt cheap. And so I ended up in 2016 with two one terabyte SSDs for 120 bucks. <laughs> because no one read Super far enough cheap. into the bug to read what it actually was. Um, so uh, I just got an 860 Evo 500 gig. Did I fail at life? No, you're fine. They're, yeah. they're great SSDs. They last for almost forever. Like I said, I managed to kill a one terabyte SSD, but I ran it in a server for a very long time for a, a cache drive. Mm. Um, and I, I was using it for, for read-write access on a daily basis kind of thing. Um, and one of those drives is still running in my, my Threadripper build. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've got an 850 Evo SSD in there. What is, the, what is the strangest beer you've ever tasted and surprisingly liked it? I have a couple surprisingly like surprisingly like there was one that sounded this was a couple years ago this was produced by Rogue and uh, it was a beer pro where the yeast was produced by some guy's beard was that's was, right was pulled from the guys <laughs> this guy sat there and grew his beard out and didn't wash it and they extracted the yeast from it. that wasn't great but it was like oh, I could drink this that's all right that's all right yeah. Yeah, yeah but it was out of some guy's face essentially. I do have a beer yeah. that is extremely odd, and it's made with caviar and champagne yeast. Nice. And it's an imperial stout at like 15%. It's a stout with champagne yeast. Yeah. Oh. And so that... that like I mentioned earlier in the show, champagne yeast is a hearty yeast. It's a hearty it yeast. It loves to eat, and yeah. it loves to poop out ABV. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a great, great sound. But I just bought it just for the name, and I didn't yeah. even like realize it had caviar and champagne yeast in it. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is going to be yeah. interesting. Um, most interesting beer that I've liked. Uh, trying to think. That gin and tonic was kind of... The, the, yeah, probably the gin goes. Yeah. Um, the uh, who made that one? There was Great Divide, and then well, oh no no no, it was, great, it was a bear bear. Um, it has they have the bear logo. Yeah, on, it's the, the bear, bear on the front. The bear, the bear and deer. Yeah, they, they make a GNT goes. Yeah. is what it's called. It's a gin and tonic goes, and and I tried it, and it's like I like gin, and I like gin and tonics. I'm not a huge goes fan or gose. Yeah, if, if you want to pronounce it that way. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it literally tasted like a gin and tonic, but it was like a 9% uh, goze beer. Anderson Valley. Anderson Valley, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and it was great. I really, really liked it. And I did not expect that going in because uh, um, they're usually way, way too salty for me. Yeah. But it tasted like a like a salt-rimmed glass with a GNT in it, and it was it was good. Yeah, it, it did literally taste like yeah. a, a really nice GNT. Uh, someone asked what the monitor behind me is. Uh, this is an LG... 43 inch 4k ips panel um it is a productivity panel not a gamer panel but it is probably the best bang for the buck panel you can get it's about 700 dollars, 
and I paid cash for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, you telling me about uh, it. Yeah, I, I absolutely splurged on this monitor, but uh, it is 100% of the Adobe RGB spectrum, and it's 99.6% of like most other color spectrums. Yeah. And for a productivity monitor, for a sharpness, for a uh, screen real estate, it is absolutely my favorite monitor in production today. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact model model number on it, but there's two different models of this. Uh, there's basically a standard and a professional version. The difference between the two is it's 700 versus the thousand, and the thousand dollar one comes pre-calibrated with a color chart from the mm. factory, so you can tell your computer what your color chart says, and it'll automatically be calibrated. Yeah. Whereas this one's like 99.8 percent accurate from the factory. So, but yeah, uh, LG 43 inch IPS 4K. It, it's amazing. Tyler <laughs> tried carrot beer. I've actually had, we've had beet mm -hmm. beer at the. I've had the, I've had beet the beer. Beet beer. The, we've had uh, carrot beer. They've it's not it wasn't beer. It was that high wheel. Yeah. That high mead and wine and cider mix, but they made it with carrots. Yep. They have that here in Oregon. Uh, would we ever drink tactical nuclear penguin? So what that is <laughs> is it's brew dogs thirty plus something percent. It's one of their. Big big beers. Yeah, they don't even sell it in the states here. Yeah. So no, I would love to drink can, it and try it. Do they sell it in Washington? No, they don't. You have to order it online. Oh, do you? Yeah, you. Okay. All, you have to order. It's like you know, hundred dollars, <laughs> and it's a little twelve ounce bottle. But it's like it's malt liquor. You're buying yeah. malt liquor, right? Um, I think this isn't the one that comes inside of a stuffed squirrel though. They mm -hmm. have one that comes with taxidermy. It's inside of a, either a squirrel mm -hmm. or a skunk, and you get to keep the taxidermy bottle. In oh, really? Yeah. It's like, that's how <laughs> the, the bottle itself, and then you pour it out of the animal's mouth. I've seen. Okay, they, they have like they have the, like the badger one. Yeah, they have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. So okay. that one's even larger okay, than this okay, one. Okay. Um, but wow. yeah, I would love to drink that and try it. But that'd be fun. Uh, we try. I uh, we tried getting that Samuel Adams. Um, remember they came out with that really specialty one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we we thought we talked about because they there was a Costco in Washington about an hour and a half away from. Yeah, it, it's three hundred dollars a bottle is what yeah. it is, and and it's uh, it's the the Sam Adams Reserve. The Reserve, yeah. Um, and, we, uh, we talked about like all of us splitting it and yeah. uh, going in on it. Never happened. But it's three hundred. It's three hundred dollars for like a pint and a half. Yeah, exactly. And they recommend a shot each, but still, yeah, three hundred dollars. I got to get twelve of my closest friends to give me thirty dollars each. Yeah, to 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 make that. I know for three hundred dollars, what liquor could we buy? Right. <laughs> uh, uh, nice Bryce says, "How about a favorite warm beer?" Warm beer. You know, most. Uh, I actually really enjoy warming almost all of my beers. I even yeah. like heat them up to like tea temperature and i mm. love a good hot sour and a good hot stout uh sours are really good uh um i i, I really prefer a, a really like a warm stout yeah and one of the cocktails i'm thinking about doing is we should do a flip the flip oh yeah yeah we should do a flip we, should do, we could do that i got that uh poker thing that's too. right yeah yeah so john, we... john just bought a, a a wrought iron poker and uh so we're gonna uh, heat that up on a torch and we're going to make a good old fashioned flip with a whole egg and a stout yep. and uh, everything else. So. The videos and the ideas we have coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, flips are good. I've had a flip before but it, it wasn't like a true flip. It was just like a, an on tap and then they heat it. And then it they, kind of they here's a poker yeah, into uh, it. But, but no, a, a true flip is a, is a real high ABV stout. It's like a 16% ABV I stout. I got those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that you crack a raw egg into and you add liquor on top of it and then you heat it with a raw iron. Oh, yeah. We, so, we are totally doing that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but most stouts recommend serving temperature is 60 to 65 F. Yeah. Um, or whatever that is in Celsius. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but uh sam adams was never cool in the 90s <laughs> samuel adams <laughs> samuel or uh yeah. not samuel adams uh jackson samuel jackson was cool in the yeah <laughs> um let's see there was there was red dog there yeah, was zima zima 2020 yeah 2020 2020 is still cool yeah <laughs> uh the benefits of having your beer warmed is that your flavor profile of the beer. The colder your beer gets, the more bittering notes you will get. The warmer it gets, the maltier and sweeter it gets. So for most stouts, they're chocolate and roast mm -hmm. uh, based. So you're going to get that chocolatey, roasty coffee flavor. Mm -hmm. And if it is bourbon <laughs> barrel age or whiskey barrel age, that those whiskey tones or bourbon, whatever liquor will 
come out even more so. All right. Um, let, let me break it down this way because um, not a lot of people understand beer as far as temperature served, but everyone understands um, soda, they understand milk, and they understand coffee. Yeah. So so let me break it down this way. Um, have you ever had like a an ice cold soda, like a Sprite or a Mountain Dew or something like that, or a, or a decent root beer? And after a little while, like like you get it out of the out of the fridge and it's thirty three degrees and it's literally ice cold. Yeah. And and you crack it open and you're like, oh, this is so good. Quenching, I love it. And once it's warmed up to room temperature, you're going, yeah. It's sweet. Tastes like sugar. It, it tastes like it, it's super sweet and like syrupy and yeah. it's like clinging to your mouth. The the your taste buds have warmed up. Uh, you're you're tasting much more of the sweetness notes to it. And, and they oversweeten it so it tastes sweet when you're drinking it cold. Yeah. Um, once it's warmed up, it, it's it's too syrupy. And, and you're going, ah. Uh, Sam Adams Utopias was the other one we were looking at. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's $450, $450 for 24 ounces. Now, yeah. when it was released, it was $300. That's the inflated price that you're getting on eBay right now. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Sam Adams Utopias. Thank you. Um, but uh, once it's warmed up, you're, you're, you're not getting any of the dulling notes to your tongue, all you're getting is the super syrupy sweet. Yeah. Um, the same thing with the crappy break room coffee. If you grab a, a, a vat of coffee and you pour it super hot out of that and you take a drink and it's so hot, it's almost burning. Yeah. But it's it's hot enough that you can drink it. You're going, okay, it's, drink, it's just I, coffee. I, it's I can caffeine. I don't taste it because it's burning my taste buds. Right. Little, little, little drop of sugar, maybe a little cream. I'm good to go. Once that coffee cools down, it just tastes like tar and it, tobacco. It's it's and... it's it's that super thick tar taste. Yeah. It's the, it's all you're tasting is the burnt notes out of the roast. Yeah. You're not tasting the the flavors that you get. Mm, iced coffee. I love cold coffee. Um, think of that in the terms of beer, where beer, if it's served super cold, you're not going to taste it. You're not going to taste um, all of, all of the rich flavors because the flavors in beer. Are if we're getting into stouts, it's the it's the chocolate, chocolate, chocolate it's the, the roast, roast, the the malts, mm -hmm. the, the that kind of stuff. If you're talking IPA, you're t you're talking the hop flavor. Yeah, and you want yeah, and the hop right. flavor, the bittering flavor, and you want that to be cold. Y yeah, you you want the hop flavor to be cold, but sometimes a beer will change over the course of drinking it. So you'll you'll serve an IPA at 38 degrees or 40 degrees. And, and and you get that that real uh, hop forward flavor to mm -hmm. it, the, the real grassy and citrus notes. And as it warms up, some more of the malt comes out. Yeah, and, and, and you, some more of the other flavors start coming out. By the time you're at that bottom of your glass, you're like, well, why does this taste sweeter? Or am I just right. drunk? Right, you exactly. Why, why can I drink like four of these now? Whereas before I'm going, wow, that's way too hoppy. Yeah. That's why, is, is the flavor evolves as it warms up. And that's why uh, all these big beers tell you, serve your uh, our beer ice cold so you don't taste any right. of it yeah. and where if you've ever had even a slightly warmed up you know bud light or bud light platinum i think someone was uh yeah. jag uh, was saying yeah it's gonna taste a lot different it's gonna smell a lot yeah. different you get much more of those sour notes that are yeah. coming and not the good kind of sour like a good like raspberry sour no. beer or something like that Mo most of those are <laughs> rice a sweetened, yeah. and so you're getting this really funky rice aroma to where most craft beers are 100% grain, yeah. and that's why they're costing that much. You know, it's when it costs two dollars for a pint and a half yeah. of this, where this is Bud Light is you know 89 cents or a dollar 25 or yeah. whatever. Um, it's because they're using cheaper quality yep. sugars. Yep. Yeah. Stouts are good at 55F and that's pretty much like the starting points for stouts. Some of yeah. them will recommend 50, but most of them are 55 to 65 actually. Yeah. Um, that they recommend serving at that temperature and, and drinking them at that temperature. Yeah. And most, most of your local bars, they don't do that. They don't care. No, no um, they, they, they'll, they'll get a Sandy Empire stout or a Deschutes uh, Black, Black Bee Porter yeah. and they'll serve it at 38 because that's what their fridge is set. Yeah. That's what their fridge is set. And for most people, that's the thing is most people want to have that really cold because they think that that's what all beers are supposed to be served at. Branding what... and marketing has taught you that beer served as cold as the Rockies is the best way to yeah. drink beer. And that's why, like, if you ever have a iced chilled glass from a freezer, don't get that. That actually ruins your beer. You're actually adding water into your beer. You're yep. actually adding more, or your beer will go flatter faster because the CO2 will grab a hold of those crystals and you'll get more bubbles and your beer will go flat twice as fast. Yep. So ask for a clean glass and maybe even and maybe with a, a water rinse yeah, to warm it exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. A water rinse to warm it up and yep. clean off whatever's there. And you'll get a nice clean pour. Yep, exactly. So, 
Yeah. Again, we're from Oregon. We we love we love stuff. Beer. yeah. <laughs> as much as we talk computers, they're like, oh, yeah. beer, liquor too. Yeah, we can yeah. go on about I'd go the exact. On, I'd go on for hours on yeah, this, on but uh, uh, we're at two hours and fourteen minutes, so I think that's going to call it a show. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, mm-hmm. Love doing the Q and A session. Hope you guys got your daily do- or your weekly dose of tech news, beer news, all in one place. That's what we aim to do. In a family-friendly manner. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, Be sure to catch my next video coming out either Friday or Saturday. I'm still figuring out how I want to film the VR section of it. Again, spoiler alert, obviously it's a VR build. But uh, still figuring out how I want to film that and then edit it. So uh, might eat on Friday, probably on Saturday. (laughs) That one will post. Uh, There might be two versions of it. Yep. So uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter at uh, Craft Computing. Make sure to follow John at Tops and Brews, H O P S A N D B R E W S, on literally any Anything, social media platform. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's on Instagram, he's on Facebook, he's on Twitter, he's on Grinder, he's on. <laughs> <laughs> I always slide right. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you all for joining. I do appreciate you all watching. Dylan, email me. <laughs> yes, please. Email one of us, I don't care. Yeah. Talk so, to us. So yeah, email me. I would be more than happy to talk trade. I'd be more than happy to talk shipping prices. Literally, let me know what it costs to ship it here. I will. Sh- I will. I will pay your shipping here, and then I'll send you something in return, buddy. Yes. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's do business. So again, thank you all for watching. This has been Talking Heads episode thirty-one. Jeez. We'll see you next week. See you guys. <laughs>